I'm going to work hard to be happy. I deserve to be happy. They would say things like that, that you want to hear. And guess what? In my research, that was the drama that many folks liked all ages. Mm -hmm. I hate that word idol, by the way. I really just like that word idol because you're already going like this. So if you're saying K-pop idol, you're up here. Why are you doing that? When they're humans and actually, honestly, they're under so much pressure, they're going to make a mistake. <laughs> Completely 100% disagree. Korea is not a depressed country. <laughs> I don't mind being called Gondi. I should just say that. Yeah. What's the hardest thing about being? Is there a hard thing about being here? Yeah, um, <laughs> the, the rush hour commute because I'm still a suburban mom. Yeah. Uh, even though when I went to college, I was at NYU, so New York City, like loved it. But I even coming here, I was like, oh my goodness. And you know, Korea, they squeeze you in. Yeah. That's still good thing. I'm not claustrophobic, but as I'm getting older, I have less tolerance mm. for the squeezing in. So I push back a little bit going, okay, I can't squeeze in anymore unless I'm touching someone's jacket. Mm. So I think that would be the only thing you have. There's certain times that you're just like, oh, this is so, I don't know what the Korean word is, but you know, just, um, you know, there's, there's some word for it. It's just tap tap hai. Tap tap hai no or, Maybe, or like just, you almost feel suff yeah, suffocated. Yeah. So maybe yeah, it's yeah. tap-tap-hai. Yeah. I'm, I'm like just, it was a short subway ride. It wasn't that bad because I was coming from Yeongdong. Mm. But I was like, that would be hard. Mm. So there's sometimes I'm like, wow, you can only travel in Korea in Seoul like 10 to 2, a 2 p.m. I'm kidding. Mm. But that would be my low tolerance because I'm mm. suburban. I'm mm. used to driving. No, it's even hard for me. Like oh, we even it? call it Chiyokcho, which means like hell subway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I, that would be... Yeah, and so, I'll, I mean, I'll bring this up, but, you know, I kind of consulted with the Itaewon tragedy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, actually, recent months, I'm thinking, okay, this is a little bit ridiculous when you're squeezing this much on a subway. If any catastrophe happened, mm -hmm. like it got stuck, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it could be dangerous or slash, I, like, anybody could hyperventilate because you're squeezed in like this. Mm -hmm. I don't it's think that's always that good. nothing generally happens. Knock on wood. Yeah, yeah. Wood. Yeah, yeah. I, I worry, but that would be the only, otherwise, no, I, I love the pace. I can keep up. Mm -hmm. um, I love that it brings back my language skills because you can lose your language skills yeah. like that in, in America, right? So I don't have much opportunity to practice it. So even though they can hear my uh, not so good padum, right? They're mm -hmm. like, oh, way good again, yeah. And then they switch to English. I'm like, no, stop, speak Korean. But mm -hmm. then I, I, but then I'm like, oh, I see why they're doing it. it they're being friendly. It, it was not like that growing up. It, mm -hmm. They would actually scold you when you didn't speak Korean. Now. It's very global friendly, very foreigner friendly. So in some sense, I love using my Korean here mm. and being able to read faster mm. because I don't practice reading in America either. So I, I love that. Mm. brings back my Koreanness. Maybe my Kondenness. Is this on, is this <laughs> no. on record? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're recording. We're, we're going through. I don't through. mind. I don't <laughs> mind being called Konde. I should just say that yeah. because I think it's my age. I'm 50. So hiddenly, I think I still have a little bit of that Gen X. Of course, I'm a Gen X mentality. Yeah that I was raised with, exposed to my parents' mentality, but then I work with lots of MZs and my, my kids are Gen Zs. I'm kind of hip in that sense, so I understand that perspective. But sometimes when I'm talking to like a Gen Zer, I'd be like, I'll say something. They're like, I'll see their face, especially Koreans. They're like, mm. oh, yeah. And I went, oh, I just pulled a Gundam move. But you know what? I'm, I'm okay with that <laughs> because it's just my perspective. And, and that's part of actually mental health, being able to share different perspectives with different generations, mm -hmm. you know? Mm. Um, so those are the conversations I love. But someone called me that the other day, and they said it as like, oh, uh, that's just, I go, no, you meant it. Mm. And, I, and I was fine. With it. I was like, it's okay. I am. I'm old enough to be your mom, so you can call me that. You should start a second channel, <laughs> Nunes Gonde. I know. Instead I, of Nunes, I, Nunes I, Dutchie, I, you can have like the second about channel. It. Where I, you just, I thought about it. Um, you, you spill the tea, and you yeah, give the hard stuff. Because I think um, there's, like I said, then they get pleasantly surprised when they realize I'm kind of cool, when mm -hmm. I can actually talk to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. But then... I'll pull a little like one liner of something that sounds like their mom probably. And then mm. they go, wait a second. I go, yes, I'm old enough to be your mom, but I'm not your mom. Mm. You know? But so. honestly, I got like only vibes from your contest more than like Oma vibes. You oh, know? good, good. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I want, right? Yeah, I don't want the. Cool. Um, growing up, I actually didn't like the mm. like Ajimoni vibes, mm. right? Like, oh, I know better. And so that was one thing I was determined not to be like that. Because especially when you're talking about mental health, you don't want to be like this, oh, here's what you do. 
and I am going to tell you what to do. Does that make sense? Mm. That's the last thing I want. Mm. Yeah. Tell me about the Omni vibes because we know, probably like, watch it very differently. What do you see? When yeah, you... like you don't really give like scolding vibes in your content or like gonde vibes. Yeah, like, if you told me I that, didn't... I would actually be actually horrified. Mm. Yeah, and you, you're the type of person who I want to watch drama with. Yeah, that would be so cool. We should do that. <laughs> we should do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, what are you watching right now? Um, Actually, I'm not a very drama person, so okay. I'm not really watching, but with you, I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can watch them, and uh, we can talk about it. No, yeah. that, that's nice. That's Thank the best compliment. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But that you were going to say something different. On knee vibes. No, I was, okay. was going to ask, have you done any sort of like uh, live watching drama things? Yeah, I've done okay. watch parties. Now, one of the most recently watch was uh, Marry My Husband. Mm. It was very popular here. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then YouTube bumped us off, which I understand because I was streaming live through uh, Amazon Prime. So mm. in the U.S. Mm. But then because people were like determined to watch with me and talk about it, mm. I stayed on YouTube and we watched from our own devices. Oh. So I'm watching my monitor, they're seeing me watch my monitor mm. and they're watching from their own screens. But you know what, it fosters the kind of like camaraderie and mm. funness and people are commenting going, oh, look how pretty, or, or look how terrible that, you know, it's fun, <laughs> yeah. it's fun. And I'm just commenting too, so I had to watch it again. Like when you're doing a live watch party, you're you're. Do it. It's like chunking so going, Oh, okay. Someone just commented, and you're trying to host. So, oh, let me move my mic. Um, so then I just realized I had to uh, rewatch the actual final episode. So yeah, I've done it like two. Or th- I did the glory. I did the glory final episode, mm-hmm. and that was well watched. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you you see my horrified face, but actually the glory final episode of part two was actually really well done. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't as gruesome. Did you see it? I no. got. To okay. about two, three episodes from the end, and then I decided oh. I'm not going to finish it because I'd rather finish it in my head. Oh, I Aww. see, I see. Because That's I could kind of see where it was going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I found it very predictable. Oh, okay. Bit. That's funny because I, I like predictability. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, it um, it was a good ending, I thought. And so I didn't want it to end where she completely did revenge, which she did, and it was justified. Mm-hmm. I needed to see some sort of like... And maybe it's just me wanting to see some sort of redemption where it wasn't so, ha ha, I got you back. Because mm. I didn't want to endorse that. Yeah. And, it, and it showed that. She got with the doctor in the end, I guess. She did. Yeah. Um, and then alluded to that he was going to get his own revenge. Okay. Like they left room for season two. Yeah. But again, the way they did it without, I don't want to give spoilers, but yeah, they, they had her almost in some sense realize, well, I did, I did my revenge. What do I live for? I did not want to see that. Like, mm. I wanted her somehow to go, I can continue living and change my life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And so she did. Mm. So, I think the idea of watch parties is really interesting because when you came to see me at Hanyang, mm-hmm. uh, one summer you came and gave a special lecture, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was teaching a class on Korean cinema and philosophy. And all we had to do every day is watch a movie, a Korean movie, and then together. talk about it. But it, the, it was the idea of watching it together. Right. And it changes it because if you watch it at home just on a small screen or if you watch it there, but when you're watching it with another group of people are all present and all awake, it changes what you're seeing, I think, or it changes how you perceive it. And we watched Xingua yeah. Hamke along with the gods. Okay. And it's this kind of, you know, mystical thing going on. But it was all about the love for parents. There was this hyodo yeah. really going. Yeah. And at one point during that movie, towards the end, I had 25 people from all over the world bawling loudly. And I was sat at the back going, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going <laughs> to cry. But it was the other people crying that make these crying. And the same with laughter mm-hmm. and the same with smiles, I think. It's kind of contagious, it's contagious isn't contagious, it? yeah. Mm-hmm. And, the, and, the, and the tears are contagious, too. You, that's why when you watch a K-drama, you see somebody crying. You also could well up with tears, mm-hmm. you know? Hence, you too. <laughs> is, is that true about, like, the sociopath test? Like, if you see somebody mm-hmm. yawning and then you yawn or... Uh, you know oh, what I mean you, by that? You, it's, uh-huh. it's kind of like empathy. You you pick up on their tiredness or their tears. I mean, or... sometimes I see somebody yawn and it's a joke going, uh oh, I'm going to yawn, or somebody sneezes yeah. and you, like, you know, but I think the sociopath test has more have to do with the emotions. Like, okay. they, you know, not so much the yawning and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would be a little bit. You can see some of those tendencies too. Yeah. In some people. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, and that's what's difficult. So I try not to. So yeah, even in the K-dramas, one thing I love about what they do is at the end of the day, even the antagonists, this is my opinion, mm. are not really antagonists. Mm. In like Western television, they're the antagonists. They're mm. they're pretty evil or whatever. And then you like hate them. In Korean dramas, you actually hate them too. Mm. You're like, oh my God, what? 
But then you, you then they add the writers add a little backstory. Yeah. And of course, I'm a therapist, so I see a little bit more empathy and going, oh, that's why they're that bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, in some sense, I have to justify, which I think is okay to do, of why this person turned out the way they do. You know what? Because that's part of my work. Mm-hmm. When someone comes in and they tell me the story of where they are at, I have to hear their history a little bit. And that's why K-dramas do well. So you actually end up still disliking the person. But they're not a true antagonist. They actually become somebody you actually feel sorry for. Mm. So that's what I love about K-dramas. So I'm diverting a little bit. But yeah. The Is writer should be like, sorry, so smart for that because the story has to make sense for like mm. an antagonist. So yeah. 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 And actually, so Mary, my husband's a classic. I don't know if you know the story, but mm-hmm. it's a, re- it's a revenge second chance story. Mm-hmm. So someone goes back in time and they can change their life. So you know it's totally f- fantasy, mm-hmm. but why people like it is people love second chance stories. Yeah. You to see, yeah. oh, this Park Min Young's character changing her life because she lived a pretty sad life before. Mm-hmm. Then she changes it because she has the support of a really good person in her life. But then there's this antagonist and she did a great job acting. I'm telling you, she was very we disliked her to a T. But then even my viewers start knowing or the viewers that are people in my community start knowing what I'm thinking. They're like, oh, Jeannie, when are we going to see her backstory? Mm. <laughs> or like, we know mm. that there's got to be trauma in her life. And sure enough, they show that she was a neglected child, had mm. nobody in her corner. She became bitter. She was the personality to turn bitter. Some people change it for good. Some mm. people, you know, d- turn to like coping mechanisms that are harmful. She turned to a bitter person. And that's why she was like that. Right. So you. There's some empathy that came in. You still dislike her at the end. Again, that happens. But there's like, oh, that's why. That's why she was so hateful. Mm. Yeah. Is the same true of the heroes that they also have these shades of grey? Because I'm oh, thinking yeah. of a lot of Bong Joon-ho movies. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, Taxi Yun jun sa the one yeah. about Gwangju. You have Song Kang-ho's character who's a bit of yeah. a like a deadbeat father. But they're not these parad paradigms of virtue and right. holiness but both the good and the bad do they do they yes i i i love that uh, so did you guys see killer paradox probably, probably not i'm talking to people who don't okay <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's really good cheo shik and uh son so go i okay. love both of them good acting it's called killer paradox because he becomes a murderer mm. by mistake oh. now how do you become right you're like what <laughs> but it's like it started out with self-defense but then he realized the mur- the person he murdered in self-defense, which he really was to defend his life, was a serial killer. Mm. And then <laughs> if you've seen Dexter, it's a Western show, kind of remind me of that. So then he realizes, oh, the people I – this person I killed was a terrible person. And then he kind of just it's, – it's actually paradoxical because these people would come into his life that are actually serial killer, killers, murderers, rapists, mm. and he would end up killing them but not on purpose till the latter half of the story mm-hmm. where he became an anti-hero. It's kind of Batman-ish or something. Kind of Batman-ish, yeah. and actually his, his sidekick was called Robin. Oh, <laughs> Robin. <Aww. Yeah. laughs> um, but that's a classic example where I thought, there's no real winner here, and I'm not endorsing murder, but you kind of understand his case. You know, it was like a hard thing to say, but it represented life, I feel like. Mm. He did it by accident, but what he should have done was gone to the police which he was about to, but that's why it's it's a funny, dark comedy. It actually ended up being hidden, like circumstances hid that he did it, mm-hmm. so he just stayed quiet. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyways, yes, there are many shades of gray. There is no black and white when it comes to your emotions, mental health. There isn't. Yeah, and right. people can argue with me, but that's actually what I call dangerous thinking, when it's like this way or this way. I'm like, oh, you know what? That's why there's stress, you know, because you got it. You think it's got to be this or this. Now, there's facts. That's different. We're not mm. talking facts when it comes to your emotions. Mm. Are K-dramas getting that killer paradox? And you mentioned the glory earlier, which I've seen parts of. That's that's physical abuse and drugs. And it's quite uncomfortable to watch. I remember watching one episode of DP, the military yeah. one, and I was like, yeah. I can't watch. This is like... Yeah, it was, that's hard. It, mm-hmm. it, it, vicarious trauma I'm getting. Is yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> that's a good word. And I, I think like, they've done studies which show that people receive secondary trauma yep. as mm-hmm. uh, first trauma. The effects on the brain are the same, yeah. which is kind yeah, of weird, right? Um, yeah, we normally associate K-dramas with being like romantic and love under a cherry blossom and holding hands and very soon to And around. they still are. Yeah. So you're, I know what the question you're asking me, are they getting more yeah, they're dark? Yeah, getting darker. Um, I would still say no. Okay. I would still say it depends on, now don't forget K-dramas are getting global uh, responses and mm. global attention. 
So those that are made for that are specifically made for Netflix. So like The Glories mm. and The Killer Paradox and DP, they were specifically made for Netflix. So they've released all the episodes and they're darker. Mm. But the ones, I'll be honest, really made for Korean audiences or Korean drama style like TVN, JTBC, they are true K-dramas. Mm. And this is this the Gondemi where I'm like, I prefer that. Like I hope we don't, I don't mind the killer paradoxes and the glories. I'm glad they're putting K-dramas on the map because they're good. it's good writing but I, and good, great acting, but I mm. don't want it to be the norm. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I want to be able to count. Oh, here are three. Like Squid Game was one of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Also made for Netflix. Right. Mm. Yeah. What's a K-drama to you, Yoon? So when you think of a K-drama, like what comes into your mind? Is it Squid Game? Is it a Saguk? Is it some romantic? Mm. So what, what is it for you? Question. For me, like it's like two types. Is it like K-drama or K-drama? Mm. I mean, like if you talk about like K-drama with like foreign people, you mean like Squid Games or like The Glory kind mm. of like dark or like made for global things. Mm. But like, I mean, when I say K-drama with my Korean friends, <laughs> it's like a little bit different. Like they pull out like Coffee Prince or mm. like Secret Garden, those like classics, right? Mm. Yes. And my mom watches like, um, you know, like, KBS, yeah, KBS yeah. ones, <laughs> yeah, KBS, SBS, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Those have like more vibely vibes, yeah, and those are like more, um, you know, like not very dark. The they have like plots and antagonists, but they don't really go deeper with like mm -hmm. depression. They're like family or, dramas yeah, yeah, that yeah. last for a hundred episodes. Mm -hmm. I'll watch a couple of them that I think are good, mm -hmm. but I think those appeal to like. The older, like the KBS dramas, I'll see them yeah. on TV and go, "Oh my gosh, how many episodes is this?" <laughs> but some of them are good because they do focus on the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they don't necessarily because they're, and then they focus on fifty family members. So that's why mm -hmm. they can't go deep. Mm -hmm. But I do like seeing the, like the whole dynamics of the family. Mm -hmm. I like those old school dramas because it still reflects Korean society. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind having those exist. I'll recommend them to viewers, but they're like, then they go, "Oh, I just looked it up, Genie. It's fifty-two episodes," which I understand it's long. Mm -hmm. But those still need to have. They still need to exist because mm. they show family, family drama. Yeah, <laughs> not a makjang. Mm. Don't like those. <laughs> but uh, showing the complexities of mm. in-laws and mm. then daughter-in-laws and you know chebol families, but then poor families. I like all that. Mm. Yeah. How many dramas, like per week? How much dramas do you watch? So I want to go into the the act of this because I know mm. one of my jobs is to read books. I mean, that's mm. just part of being an academic. Yeah. You need to read. Yeah. Like in terms of consumption, what's your drama consumption like? And then sure. after that, I also want to hear, do you ever watch a drama? You're like, man, this sucks. Yeah. You, you're a positive person and I uh. can see lots of like vibes coming off you and I know you a little bit. Yeah. Are you ever watching one kind? Jesus, this is just terrible. What am I mm. doing here? But I still have to watch it. So okay. what's those two things so, like? Yeah, I will uh, share that I watch probably a lot less than people think. Mm. You'll see me hype up the dramas I'm watching. So I would say per week, I tend to focus on one to two. Mm. And at a given time, I'll maybe rotate two to three max. Mm. But they're ongoing dramas. So like, obviously, there's a break in the week. But if I but I like to watch them for self care. So if I don't have something new to watch, I'll watch an old drama. Mm. And I love the like you just said, Coffee Prince, mm. Secret Garden. I'll go back to the classics. So I don't watch that many. In fact, I asked some viewers recently, "What's your average? Like how many K dramas? They're like in the upwards of three hundred to seven hundred in the last three years. I'm I believe three hundred in the last fifteen years. I'll be honest. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. Yeah. Maybe four hundred, but not that much. What does it look like in a week? In a week, how many? Yeah. Like one. time, like oh. is, it, is it like I watch one episode a week, so it's like one hour a week? Oh no, no, I watch. Yeah. Um, I would say I average one and a half episodes, one episode a day, or one and a half episodes every two days. Yeah, it's not that much. Yeah, I don't think so. Do you do one point um, five speed or something like no. that? No, no. Okay. I, when people do that, I'm like, what? Like, what, 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 what? Like, and I'll <laughs> ask. <laughs> Gunde, right? Old, yeah. old I had someone do my hair recently. I go, oh, what K drop? I always like to ask every. Usually the MZ is what are you watching when they're yeah. so well someone was doing my hair recently I got a scalp treatment that was so, so good anyways I asked her what drama are you watching she goes oh Doctor Slump and then she named the ones I'm watching oh do you like it she goes yeah Doctor Slump I'm watching that one on two times speed I'm like what what and then I went two times she's like yeah but I'm getting it it's good I was like how do you how how do you watch it and I asked her because 
that to me has a little bit to do with your self care. Mm. So she said, "Well, we're very coupe. Like mm. we want to take in all this content, and that's long form content, which mm. I know. And I, you could see me. This is where like the motherness when I'm going on, oh, but that's not." That's not really self-care, though. So they're not watching for that. So I'm, like, thinking all this where I watch a full episode and a half or which I can take in a given night to, to decompress. Like, mm-hmm. I'll watch it to decompress. So let's go back to what I watch. I'm very picky about what I watch. So that's right. why I barely don't watch compared to what a lot of people watch. Mm. The Glory I watched because I knew it was a famous writer who wrote Goblin, Kim and Sook, so many good things. Mm. And it was dark, and it was really hard to take the first three episodes. But then I really, then I watched it and thought it was really good. Killer Paradox was also entertaining, but DP I stopped. Like, mm. and so when I go to the dramas that suck, I'll be honest, there's not a lot mm. that I watch that suck. Why? Because I'm very picky about good, what I good watch. Taste. So if I look like, <laughs> so if I look like it's stupid to me, yeah. which some look do, I don't watch it. Mm. And then I'll hear about it being good. So I'll give you the classic example. True Beauty. Do you know True Beauty? Um, Moon Ga Young, Chao Nu. You guys are like mm. blank stares. Anyways, it yeah. was a 2021 high school drama. Okay. Everyone was talking about it in the U.S. at the time, and it did very well in Korea. I'm like, I, I can watch no high school drama. <laughs> I was like, what? And, and, and I remember thinking, yeah, I did like Boys Over Flowers. And then people kept talking about it for like a month. Finally, I was like, I had one night free, and I went, oh, I don't have a K-drama. Let me turn on True Beauty on Vicky. This mm. is in the U.S. And I must say, it had already finished, so I binged the first five episodes. I went, what? This this is brilliant. <laughs> like, it was very good, and it highlighted suicide and bullying. And I, and that's actually one of the top K-dramas I'll use for that mm. because it, it did it in a, in a, I would say, in a more friendly manner than a dark, like, DP or The Glory. Mm. You know, it was a very lighthearted K-drama that showed high schoolers dealing with suicide. Mm. So anyway, long story short, I did end up watching that. But I'm very picky about what I watch. So if I read the instructions and I and I have watched a couple episodes of something, I'm like, this is not, I'll stop. Mm-hmm. But I, don't, I wouldn't say sucks. It's just not interesting to yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. I could think of one. Now we are breaking up with <laughs> Song Hye Kyo. I was like, what? Oh, so boring. Stop. And then I think I stopped... Um, my Demon, which was so popular here mm. and globally, I was like, well, like this is not doing it for me. Stop. It was yeah. Song Gong. I don't know why people love him. Song Gong and I forget the actress's name, um, very famous. Kim Yoo Jung, mm-hmm. very, very famous. Mm. Just didn't, boring. So mm. if it's usually boring to me. So then I don't watch. Yeah. And people are like, what? <laughs> and that might be where the age comes in. Where if it's not grasping me because it's people that I don't, I don't know. I can still relate to a lot of things, but... I'll be pickier about that because I want to watch something that I want to watch. Yeah. So I'll be very choosy. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. And good. I'll get people on my on my Instagram or something going. What? Like you you forgot this on your list? You'll, and I'll go. Well, I forgot it because I didn't watch it. Number one, and I didn't forget it because I chose not to watch it. Mm. <laughs> so I'm very firm about like you know that I'm very picky about what I watch because yeah. we're busy. Yeah. It's yeah. good to value your time. Yeah. If you're exactly. not enjoying a book, put it yeah. down and get something I you do. like. Yeah. yeah and yeah, people yeah, actually say drama. to me, so you don't yeah. watch because you feel pressure. I go, actually, no. Unless someone goes, I'll give you another example. Tomorrow, nail. Did very well. It mm. was about now. That was a dark one about suicide. It did very well in Korea. Is that a recent one or twenty twenty two with uh, with uh, oh sorry um, why am I drawing a blank on his name Rowan mm. Rowan did very well and I decided to watch it because so many had people mentioned mm. it and they and I thought here's one I'll do for like a case study. Mm. I'm actually I was in a dark place for like three days because it was very dark all on suicide but did an excellent job really highlighting different reasons why people come to that hopeless point. Mm. I was like, who's the writer? You know, I had to look him up. Very well done. And so I watched that because other people had talked about it. Mm. And so I was like, let me let me look at this as a therapist point of view. But that's very rare for me to do. Even if people go, you need to watch this. I'm like, I, I, I'm not going <laughs> to. Mm. I'll say it too. Going, no, I'm watching Dr. Slump. Or I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying this one. Yeah. We talk about Dr. Slump in a minute, perhaps, but in terms of acting, you've mentioned a few different actors, Song Ego and uh, Rowan and things like this. Mm-hmm. Who's got unexpectedly good acting chops? Because we normally mm-hmm. associate K-dramas mm-hmm. with hamming it up mm-hmm. and melodrama and this kind of thing. Yeah. Who's got, so there's two parts. Who's got unexpectedly good acting chops? And the second one, who... I'm not sure if there's a big uh, gene pool for this or a big answer pool. Who's been the best K-pop star in? Oh. Because I'm thinking you you mentioned like high romance and there was one with um, Jisoo from Blackpink. Was it Jisoo from Blackpink? Yeah, she was in Snowdrop. Snowdrop Mm -hmm. is what I'm thinking. Which I also stopped. 
Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I don't like this. Okay. Um, easy K-pop turned actor, yeah. idol or K-pop a- artist turned um, actor, Chuno. Lee Juno from 2 p.m. No. Great actor. In fact, I still I think he's fabulous. Not, I mean, I know him from 2 p.m., but I love his acting. And I loved every drama he's in, and he wow. does a great job. And he won Best Actor last year or two years ago for The Red Sleeve. Okay. So he has deserves that. So that's him. Now, my favorite actors I think that are really good are Kong Hyo Jin. Mm. She's in some of the classics, right? She's been acting for a while. She's in, um, most recently, When the Camellia Blooms. She also won Pe- like a Tesong Award, for, or Peksang, Peksang, um, Artist Award. She won the Tesong for that. Mm. Very good. Um, and then Lee Jae-hoon is my other male actor. He's in Taxi Driver. Mm. Mobum Taxi. He's done Move to Heaven. One, it's, these are all in my book because they're just, they did a good job in, when you have good actors, they make it believable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so those are my favorite. Those are hands down my favorite. Um, I do like others like Shin Mina, very popular act. You like her? She's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I, I've loved her from like early on, um, and she I still love her, and then she's in this new movie too that's on Netflix. Oh, w- yeah. tell me. Um, it's about three seasons. It's her and her passed away mother who comes yeah. back for a few days. And uh, it's kind of depressing, set in the winter, but and I'm about halfway done because again I fall asleep. Um, it's a good movie, mm. but um, yeah, I'm, it's a good movie. It's We've seen me and I watched um, Chief of Staff. Bo oh Jagun. yeah, I heard. Of, I did not watch that one. Wow. I know a lot of people like that one, and she but she was great in Hometown Cha Cha Cha. She was good in she um, she was no no sorry she was in one called Oh My Venus. It's oh kind of cutesy. Okay. But if you like she her, you like She looked good in that. She looked good. Yeah. Okay. She. It's about body image. Oh. Mm. She starts out overweight. And actually, people criticize that, going, okay, there you go, highlighting body image. I go, mm-hmm. but I turned it around going, well, you know what? She knew she was unhealthy because mm-hmm. she, at one point, was, uh, what do you call it? beauty queen in the K-drama, in the, in, the movie, in the actual show. Then she let, you know, just was busy as a lawyer, gained some weight. And, and they did emphasize that she was unhappy, and that's what I was focusing on. She mm. was unhappy because she didn't like the way she looked, which is okay. Mm. You want to be happy with the way you look. And then she got healthier by this trainer who is Soji Sub. I love Soji Sub too. And he turned to life. And of course they fall in love. It's a typical mm. romantic comedy. And of course she looks like herself by the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. You'll like it if you like her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds like something. It's a 2014 <laughs> She also K-drum. did Uri de la Blues, didn't she? The one yes. Jeju, she did. I think she was in oh, that Oh, yeah. That's in my book too. Just highlighting clinical depression. Mm. Like long-term depression. She did a really good job with that. She was only in like a few episodes, but very memorable role. Yeah, she yeah. crushes it generally mm-hmm. in what she's in. Yeah. She seems to be really good. I remember seeing some of Hometown Cha Cha Cha. Mm-hmm. She's running around an island in a crop top and she's scaring <laughs> scaring all the old people. Yeah, all the, all the, the high money's like, what <laughs> are you doing wearing that in like, and it was like, you know, seaside town, but yeah. that, that's a good one too. It's just, she's yeah. a career woman in that one. Yeah. Mm. The intersection of mental health and K-dramas, because I I guess this is probably what makes you unique, because Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that watch Mm -hmm, mm K-dramas, and there's a lot of people talking about mental health these Mm -hmm. days. It's the topic du jour. You can't go anywhere without hearing about mindfulness and well-being and all of this. You put these together. Mm. Uh, Can we try to maybe... Here's the podcast word. Unpack that. Can we <laughs> yeah. hear about how you get these together, when it started doing, and how you play it out? Yeah. So you kind of heard that I watch it for my self care. So I think that's what makes it believable because I believe in watching K dramas for to make yourself feel better, right? Mm-hmm. And Can if you, you describe self care as well, self care, so, yeah. um, an everyday mental health hygiene. So we're really good with physical hygiene, right? Yeah. I, I hope so. I mean, right? We're like showering, taking care of ourselves, looking, working out, eating right, or trying to do that. We never mention mental health hygiene, and I talk about that is just as crucial. Like, mm. I hope no one ever says to somebody, by the way, your mental health is not important. Mm. Who, who, no one ever says, your physical health is not important. No, you mental health hygiene is, well, how are you taking care of your mind today? And yes, mindfulness is part of that, but for me, self-care was, I already do that for a living where I'm talking all mindfulness all day, so I'd rather do something more fun and lighthearted. I turned to K-dramas, and when I was a busy mom, at one point a stay-at-home mom of four kids, that was actually my pure joy and fun, mm-hmm. and I loved it. And so I remember even thinking before I became a therapist, I was like, wait, this helps me. Oh, and it actually made me think a lot about my myself, my identity. So I was even thinking back then, this would be really useful to use. And it became a natural segue when I was, I brought it into actually a very tough conversation and a family conversation and a therapy session 
pretty contentious, actually, and I was just like, this is going terribly. Because therapy is not easy, Mm -hmm. and it can go terrible sometimes. And I just went, I need to shift things. And I brought in a K-drama as Mm -hmm. an example, as homework. It was kind of like at the tail end of the session, desperate plea. But I made it believable because I go, listen, I'm not asking to binge watch a K-drama for fun. This is a very excellent example of a relationship I want you to learn from. It helped me. So I always kind of bring my in. Like I'll do some self-disclosure as a therapist going, this helps me. I believe it'll help you because I don't think I'm any different. You know, I'm just in the space of like helping, guiding your mental health. But I, it has helped me over the years decompress. Self-care is um, you need to uh, really find a way to de-stress, mm-hmm. you know, and stress is a part of everyday life. I don't care what people say. <laughs> oh, I'm never stressed. When they say that, I go, hmm. You mean you're not stressed today. Maybe you're not stressed right now. Stress is part of that. Uh, we, sometimes stress is good for you when you want to do well on your podcast. You want to do well in school. And that's all part of life. But you do need to have that balance of some enjoyment and mm-hmm. something to have nothing to do with your work. Mm-hmm. Why not? So that was me with, with um, K-dramas. And so I think when people see my face and you feel my passion, mm-hmm. it's it's authentic. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, guys, I watch it for self-care. You can too because it helped me. So I figured, why not? And so it became a natural part of, and it came well before, I would say 2017 when I first introduced it in a therapy session. Mm-hmm. But 2019 is when I introduced it in a workshop mm-hmm. with students. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're talking Gen Zs, right? It was another tough workshop, like I, I would say, like a contentious moment when we we're talking about family, and this is Asian family, family, uh, child dynamics, parent child dynamics. And people were t- asking tough questions, and they were talking a lot about the, like, the cultural trauma of the family. So we got deep. And then I went, oh, let me shift this car. Did anybody see Boys Over Flowers? I remember that. And I just whipped it out. And then I would say out of 50 kids or students, it was like 10 people. But that was enough. And I said, guys, what do you remember about Boys Over Flowers? Of course, everyone's talking about, oh, uh, you know, the actor was so cute. I mean, they talked about the wrong thing. <laughs> I was like, okay, I didn't want that so much of the romance. I wanted them to bring out the mother-son dynamic that was very contentious in the drama. And that was that's and I remember that moment when everybody just half the room hadn't seen it. Most of the room hadn't seen it. Didn't matter. I shifted the dynamic, um, bringing in a story, Mm. a K drama Mm. of a romantic K drama at that, a high school drama at that, into a mental health top into a a tough mental health conversation. Mm. And I remember the energy level shifting. And I made note of it, going, I think I need to do this more. Bring in a story instead of me going as a therapist. So let me let me share a, a, a client study. I mean, what I mean, it's kind of boring. And plus, you got to watch confidentiality. This was perfect when I was like, oh my god, this is a perfect example of the parent-child relationship we're talking about mm-hmm. that these students are struggling from. Let me bring in boys over flowers, and then I brought it in full time in the pandemic. People were so depressed during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I go, do you guys want to watch Startup? Do you remember Startup? Kim Sono startup. Oh, it's like yeah, a, yeah. I love these blank looks. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Um, it's it was a it was a, the hot drama in the U.S. at the time and yeah. even in Korea. And I brought it into a support session, and then I was like, "This is fun." Like, mm-hmm. I'm still talking mental health. I'm still talking stress, but I'm just bringing a story around it around it that people can envision and watch mm-hmm. instead of it being about themselves. Because oh. it get very stressful when I'm like, "Let's talk about your stress." Mm-hmm. I want you to talk about it, but I'll be more like. Well, okay, so it sounds like you're stressed. Well, have you seen this? You know what? You might want to watch this. And if it's relatable, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so that's how it started. Mm-hmm. And then it grew from there, thanks to Squid Game, going global. For self-care, you mentioned that you watch these dramas for self-care before you thought about introducing it mm-hmm. to other people. Yun So, you said that your mum watches dramas. Yeah. And I think a, a, a lot of women, I know my mum watches dramas as well. Does she really? Yeah, okay. of course she does. Um, uh-huh. Are they also doing it maybe subconsciously for self-care? You're doing it consciously. You're knowing that you need self-care. You need to manage your mental hygiene. That's the first time I've heard that word. Mental health hygiene. Sorry, mental health hygiene, yes. Mm -hmm. But you're consciously doing that. And then you would have all of these other women watching dramas quite a lot, and some men, of course, Mm -hmm. but they're watching them. Are they doing it for self-care, but they don't quite know that's why yes, they're indeed. doing it? Or? Yes, indeed. In fact, I didn't know. I was Back in the day, I wasn't watching K-dramas going, this is my self-care. <laughs> I realized yeah, yeah. that was the term for it. Yeah. Like As mm-hmm. I got more educated in the field of psychology, because years ago, I would say, even as recently as like, what, five, six years, we weren't talking much about mental health. Oh, no. Right. And so even pre-pandemic, my work was much harder because they would stare at me like this, even in the U.S. going, 
Oh, what, what, what do you do? Oh, you're you're a therapist. I, I mean, I got that look. Mm. Very mm. different now. <laughs> Where. Mm. We're in demand, and they they just much more people are talking about it. I know it could be we could talk about the trend in a second, but for self care, yes, no. I've heard parents tell sorry people my age tell me that they watched their parents growing up watching these dramas mm -hmm. and bawling their eyes out mm -hmm. in these K dramas. I don't know if you saw your parents doing that. Did you see them get emotional watching these dramas? They sometimes do. Yeah, yeah. But do you see them do that in real life? Look at me asking questions. Mm, like, no. okay, yeah. Really? You don't, I'm asking because, I know you're like, am I answering the question right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't no. think I got your questions oh, right. the question, um, you saw your parents get emotional watching a K-drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are they emotional like that in real life? Not really. Mm. That would be what I expect. Sometimes the answer is different, but I'm sharing that because it's a way of expressing emotions. Mm. And uh, yes, definitely people don't know that they're watching mm. for self-care reasons. They want to escape. Now, people will say, oh, my gosh, it's just entertaining. I need to escape. I'm like, okay, that's great. And I'm fine with that, too, because I think that's important. Mm. But, no, I know many um, parents, I would say, baby boomers, if we're mm. thinking older than my generation, not knowing language surrounding mental health, emotions. Oh, I'm sad. I'm They don't know how to say that. Mm. I'm talking about the Asian population. And even, even our generation outside the Asian population, they don't do that. But through a K-drama or a drama or any medium that touches them, they're expressing their sorrows yeah. and crying. That is self care. They mm. just have that don't have that language to it say. It totally makes sense because yeah. I had the similar thing like recently. Mm -hmm. Because like when I watch movies, I don't really cry in real life a lot. Like I can count like like this. Like I don't really oh. cry much in real life. But when I watch movie, I just feel like I'm in their situation, mm. and I really feel like them at that moment. So when I just um sympathize with them I just um, tear up yeah. a little bit yeah. and after that all my stress just goes away like no no way like oh I didn't really cry about my thing I just cried for their thing but it makes me better yes yeah. oh very see oh see there th that's a clip you're gonna use for this YouTube. anyway um, that's exactly what I'm getting at because uh, you know I'm expressive but no I don't have an opportunity to sit there crying throughout the day I hear a lot of traumatic stories actually in my work I sometimes I go oh my gosh I, I'm glad I can do this job and separate my job from my real life but when I'm taking like patient notes after the session I'm thinking this is a horrible story I'm sharing that and then I, but it's not my story right mm -hmm. but what helps me like decompress are <laughs> watching a, a story that actually resonates with that's just like my client but it's not my client but I can express it watching a drama in my own living room or family room, crying or movie theater by yourself. That is cathartic. Mm -hmm. That's what you were saying, that you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize I was pent up. Do you know people have told me it's in my book. They didn't know they were grieving mm -hmm. or they didn't know how angry they were at something until they saw it on a K-drama. And it doesn't even have to be the exact situation. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are moments when people are like, wait a second, I watched this. It had nothing to do with my real life scenario, but it helped me unpack Mm. that word unpack what was happening to me and I didn't realize that Jeannie how angry I was mm. and there's many and I can't even pinpoint um, a, a story but it has nothing it wasn't mean the character was angry mm. they just mm. saw something and it triggered them to go I'm pissed off <laughs> mm. that this happened to me and I'd be like wow okay and you got that from the show yeah so you're just sharing that I'm wondering if that's one of the reasons why women seem to have better mental health hygiene than men, because yeah. they're playing this out. I don't know. There, there might be other reasons, but mm -hmm. I, I'm equating it to me watching football. Mm -hmm. And sometimes at the end of the football, my team loses and we're terrible. And there's yeah. no happy ending. This is a good damn. I'm even more stressed now. Yeah. This is not self-care. This is self-torture. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Whereas K-dramas give you resolution. They provide catharsis. They, they, they can be predictable, as, as you said. Yeah, yeah. they're a catalyst or they're, they're, mm. a, they're a beautiful conduit for mm -hmm. people to relieve and unwind and, and do all of these things. And whether yeah. it's done consciously or unconsciously, maybe there's some of that going on. Mm-hmm. Across yeah, the population. that's interesting. You just said something about women having better mental health. Is that not true? No, I, I was going to ask you, what makes you say that? According to the research that I've read in the academic literature, mm -hmm. and it always changes in Korea, the people most likely to seek uh, treatment mm -hmm. are young, educated women. But, uh, yeah. And so it's because they're young, so they're associated with those values. It's because they're educated, so they know the importance of looking after themselves. They're not growing up in a factory or something like this. And, and, and women, I'm not exactly sure why those are, but yeah. the statistics say young, educated women are more likely to go 
I need some help or I'm going to do this than men. Yeah, when I 100% agree. That makes sense. But I asked that because I was thinking, well, generally speaking, think of just how women and men are, how they express emotions. It, I do believe men would seek more help and we're seeing more men seek more help, but it's mm. not technically in their DNA, right? Mm. Women are just much more verbose with emotions. Mm. Men struggle. But I know through K-dramas, and, and men will get defensive on my social media going, hey, Jeannie, we get emotional too because I'll bring out how they're female-centric narratives. We can talk about that in a second. I went, calm down. I'm not saying men can't en en enjoy them. My husband absolutely loves them. It's just that generally you're not very apt to admit, by the way, I cried my way through Dr. Slump. It's just the general g DNA makeup of men. Mm. So, But I do believe uh, I want to change that, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. um, that's just helpful to normalize seeking help. And seeking help, by the way, I would say doesn't mean professional help. Mm. It could mean talking with friends and your colleagues and just expressing, hey, guys, I'm really stressed out. I mean, the, and so people think I mean the extreme of going to seek a therapist, I go, that is like actually not on my mind at all. Like asking for help could just be like that. Hey, I need I need to go out for a drink. Can you, I need a friend. Mm. And you see that a lot in the U.S. more, but that's just normal behavior going, I need a friend, right? That can actually switch things around. In fact, you you may realize, wait, I don't need a therapist. I just realized I needed a friend to, to hear me out. And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I distinguish that. But anyway, yeah, th I mean, that research doesn't surprise me, but it's just because of the DNA. Men just don't seek help that way because it's mm -hmm. not normalized, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what do you Yeah. Sometimes I get mad. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. I'm like, you can. It's fine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You mentioned 2017 earlier, and I grew up in an era where people didn't talk about mental health. We're not meant to do it. I saw, an, I, I believe he was an Irish comedian. I saw something on my Insta reels, and he said something along the lines of, I've been practicing mindfulness my whole life because I grew up without a smartphone. When I was on the bus, I sat there for two hours watching the condensation running <laughs> down the window, and that was my mindfulness. When I was in my bathroom taking a dump, I was practicing my mindfulness, and there are 237 tiles on my bathroom floor. That is so funny. Because we were always without distraction. We just had to sit there and be in the moment and be bored and just like stare at something and take it in, which we yeah. don't really get the chance to do that anymore. Yeah, we have to purposely do it. I can see yeah. that. I mean, I things were simpler. I don't know how to say this. Things were maybe easier back in a day when we didn't have all these smartphones, but then things made it easier with the smartphones, right? Mm -hmm. Just safety-wise and all that. But yeah. there were times, and I, I remember when the cell phone came out, right? I remember an email came out. People were like, what? I do, but... It, it was simpler, and if we're going to talk on that line, one of the stressors I, I feel as a parent is I'm like, my young gener Gen Z kids, I'm like, y that's not stress, kids. <laughs> like, I don't try to, like, downplay their stress, but I'll be very like, you can handle this. I see them a little bit not being able to handle as much because they're so used to instant feelings or instant gratification or not having to have a conversation, like, and saying, I... We need to talk. They don't do that anymore. It could be mm. a Snapchat. Mm. It could be a text or a non-text. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so going along the lines of that, I feel like that could be something that I worry about in the upcoming generation. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you hold any value to the concept of people being anti-fragile? I read a book and then explored it, which was the idea that Korea did not achieve all its success despite the sufferings of colonization and war. It achieved its success because of the suffering, the suffering made it stronger, the suffering made it more resilient, the suffering made it more able to cope and deal with the the, the realities of life. There was a clip I saw of, um, I think it, he was talking to Stanford graduates and he was one of the top, um, what do you call it, uh, digital company CEOs, mm -hmm. he was an Asian guy, mm -hmm. and he sat there and he said, I, I hope you experience pain and suffering. And the mm. room just went silent. He went, because that will give you character. If you're, ed we want people, not educated people, we want resilient people. Mm. We want people that will get through this. And you could hear just this really uncomfortable silence yeah. through the Was video. Was he talking to Gen Z, like students, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the current <laughs> yeah. graduates coming out of Stanford. So this idea of anti-fragility that w we're meant to actually suffer. And once you get through that, then you get a second skin. You get more, you grow stronger as a result. Or... Is that sort of gaslighting people into punishment? I Okay, so I, there's not one way of looking at it, is what I would say. No. I do think um, 
yes, resiliency. The let's talk about Korea's history. Like not like I'm a historian, but I do think their the where they came from was difficult. And my father actually shares because he left Korea to immigrate to the U.S. in 1974 when I was a baby. So I was born here and then moved there, moved to the U.S. He always shares he's proud of how Korea has come, how far Korea has come because of the suffering. And so he's alluding to some of that. We worked hard, you know, we chamod, right? Mm-hmm. Like and toiled and turmoiled. And I can see that. But I also can see in the same breath, you don't need to have that. Like, it's not like you want people to technically suffer. But I do think it's the normalcy to feel Mm. tough emotions and happy emotions equally. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the anti-fragile, like... um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and plus I'm thinking, dance. yeah, and I yeah, do yeah. like that song, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and and the, and it, it it I do like that song a lot. And I love the message, but I think overall, like, there is no one. Sometimes we think so polarized, yes, like yeah, it's got to be this right. way, it's got to be that way, or the older generation going, it's because we suffered mm. that you guys don't get it. I've seen, I've, like, my parents said that to me. I'd be like, like growing up, I was like, oh my god, mm. they're like, you know, the SAT for us was eight hours, which I know. What I'm like, calm down, <laughs> and ours was like three hours, right? Mm. They're like, that's nothing. But as a child, that's invalidating. Well, I'm like, it was st- it's the SAT is stressful. So it's twofold. I do believe they went through hardship, and I want to validate that. But in today's generation, it does look different, mm-hmm. right? And I also never want to say to someone, you need to explain. I wouldn't word it that way, but right. I would say pain and suffering is part of life. So most likely you'll experience it. Mm. But it's not something you would wish on somebody. It just happens, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, he might have said it better. I think I knew what no, he was he trying didn't. to No, he did it. He said it exactly But that's what like I mean. That, I, I, yeah. It, it might have yeah. been a little bit more, like, yeah. well-received if he meant, like, let's build up the resiliency. But I could see what he meant because that would be something my, it's probably my age, something my generation or up would say mm. but um but you don't wish that on anybody right mm. but overall yes it can build resilience and character and the other part is but you also have to work every day to build your resilience mm. you do n- resilience is not an x factor mm. you don't have to go through all this trauma to go genie's resilient because she went through that no like we're all, we're all born with resiliency we ask actually daily resiliency is very important to be able to handle being a good employee like, mm-hmm. I think about the simple things, and people think of, like, these big things. I'm like, calm down. Just think about your daily life mm-hmm. and being happy or finding peace and contentment. That takes resilience. Mm-hmm. So that would be my answer for that, you know? There's not one way of looking yeah. at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you, Yunsa, do you think old people like me <laughs> and on knees like Jeannie? <laughs> so the way I did that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, do you think uh, they get young people's mental health and generations because there's different vibes and approaches Mm. like i i I kind of like this you know let's suffer let's go through it and Mm. let's grow is there a generational difference do you think young people approach mental health differently when you look at some content online Mm. do you relate to it or you're like that's a bit different these days i was going to say it with like sense of han you know like Mm. older generations kind of believe that there is han but like students like me, we like more like learned it in SAT ish things and we studied it and we didn't really gone through wars or like traumas that much. Mm-hmm. So we don't really get to see real traumatic things in like um visible way. Like we we also have like, oh, we have to study a lot, we have to make money. We kind of yeah, we worry about that too, but like upper generations went through it together with like wars. So mm-hmm. yeah, we don't really got to feel Han anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, like we know what is it like mm-hmm. abstractly. Mm-hmm. And what's your generation's Han? Is there is there something that it's replaced? Um, Education. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like when we talk about like when my generation mm-hmm. talk about like sooning like KSAT mm-hmm. or like university entrance. We all like make the same face, like exactly. Your heart so, rate probably goes. Yeah, through. exactly. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. So like, if I were to say there is Han nowadays, mm. I would say it is like educational thing. Mm. Yeah. And because I think that Han can take many forms, like many mm-hmm. different forms, but like for, um, Sopyeonje type of Han, I don't think that that <laughs> exists yeah. anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting because I remember reading an article you wrote on that, and I thought. At first, I was like, what? And then I read it. And I can see here's both angles. Mm. This is why the term intergenerationality, Mm. which is understanding the relationship between generations, is important. Mm. 
This is why I love Asian culture. Technically, they're so intergenerationally based, mm. good and bad, the good, bad, and ugly of every culture. But the older generation, yeah, that's where they came from, the war. Mm. And, like, my mom was born in 1950, and she mm. would tell me stories of how they were pretty well off for a family, but she, as a baby born in that era, she – didn't, they didn't starve, but my mo- my grandmother didn't have enough milk to give her, so mm. that she had to, like, loan her to her. So I would hear mm. these things going, oh, my gosh, wow. Mm. You know, and so that's what they grew up in. You're right. This generation, even my generation, we didn't grow with war, right? Mm. Though we do see war in other parts of the world, so we should say that. But generally speaking, your Han is different. I totally acknowledge that. So I, so I don't like it when people are stuck on this kind of Han. Mm. They're like, what do you mean? Mm. But your experience is different. And there's actually a lot, a lot. I mean, I actually feel sorry for the kids today. I feel sorry for my kids having to go into college in the U.S. when it's triple times more harder than it was when I went to college. Mm. So that's my way of empathizing with my own kids going, oh, my gosh, it's so much more stressful and so much more like, you know, everything's on social media. So it's all image based. So Mm. it's very different than when I went to college. So that's, I guess, your Han. Mm. Yeah. Totally. And the Sunung, I don't know how people do it. That, I do mean it. When I hear eight hours, even I, my heart rate increases. But they do it twice and three times. They do. They do Samsu and Jesu, mm. and they they put themselves through it. And I guess, yeah, it's that collective experience that yeah. makes yeah. it that happen where they, they've all gone through it and they know what it's like. Intergenerationality mm-hmm. is a feature of Asian... I, I, I get it, but is that a mm-hmm. thing or what is that? Oh, it, well, I guess directly meaning means the inter, the relationships between generations. Mm. And that is one thing I love about K-dramas. They show that very well. It's like a mother and daughter mm. or like grandmother, mother, daughter, you know? And those are those are great to learn from. That's another... I, that's why I emphasize... I will always talk about Gen Z, millennials, Gen Xers, baby boomers. You'll hear me label the generations Mm. because they each approach mental health differently. Mm. And they each approach family differently. They Mm. have different core values. That's very important to understand in, like, psychology terms, you know? Mm. And so you'll see me say that, and I'll be like, it's so important to understand what your grandmother, even though you may not think, oh, my gosh, she's so old school, because I grew up like that going, oh, my gosh, my harmony. You know, I did do that. Yes, later on I realized, oh, I, I did learn from that. I actually started doing that. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So those concepts are important because they build your foundation of family. How do you learn behaviors from your parents? Mm-hmm. Good and bad. Mm-hmm. Like I say, both. And actually the intersectionality of mental health and identity has a lot to do with how you how you were exposed as your family upbringing. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's very important as a family therapist that I look at that. And again, I always say good, bad, ugly, beautiful, all of that. It mm. There is not one way of looking at your culture, mm. right? If everyone said they absolutely loved everything about Korean culture, I'd be like, really? Right? Same thing with American culture. No, we have our good and bads of everything. You have to take it all and then figure out how you navigate, mm. you know, the hardships. Mm-hmm. I'm still navigating as a Korean American, yeah. what that's like. Yeah. Can I ask you a little bit about that, please, Jeannie? Because mm-hmm. your book is very autobiographical and yeah. it talks about moments in your own life and how you changed and what effect that certain dramas or relationships had on you as a person and yeah. it, it is very autobiographical yeah. in you just mentioned there you're a korean american how I, I think identity is becoming more and more important these days i don't mm-hmm. think i know it is how has that journey been for you in terms of identity because yunso and i we took a, we did a class last semester where we started mm-hmm. exploring the term are you Korean, Korean? Mm. And mm. it was mm-hmm. something that Korean people would say naturally to each other when they encounter people that have lived abroad, their accent mm. is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. In the UK, mm-hmm. we would never say, are you English, English? <laughs> because it would feel like, oh my God, that you're going to get cancelled for saying that. Yeah. But yeah. in Korea, it's done with no bad intention. Mm. They're, right. they're just trying to get that kind of, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Yeah. It's a curiosity. Yeah. So how was that journey been for you if I'm allowed to ask that of course a uh, complex question how much time do we have no um so in when you think bicultural identity technically yes Korean does come first so I always point this out mm. when we explain our culture we, you tend to hear Korean American Korean Canadian Korean European Korean Australian that Korean comes first so technically I would say we lead with our Korean culture. Mm. So even though I was raised in the U.S. and practically almost all of it because I came when I was uh, six months, five months old, I was raised by who? My Korean traditional parents that left 1974 Korea 
and recall 1974 Korea. Mm -hmm. I, so resentfully growing up, I'd be like, oh my gosh, Appa, Amma, that's what I called him. Uh, we don't live in 1974 Korea. Like I would actually say that going, we live in like 1985 America, but that was me as a child struggling in the US because back in the day, in the 80s especially and early 90s, Koreans, uh, Asian Americans weren't really there. Mm -hmm. And and this is where you talk to any bicultural person where they felt ignored in their own country. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to bring up racism, that's part of it. But I remember thinking as a child going, I just want to fit in, right? I just want to be American. Why do I have this color hair? I remember thinking things like that, being friends with best friends who are like six foot tall. <laughs> I'm like five feet one. No, I'm, I'm five feet. But no, five feet one and having like blonde and wanting to have blonde hair because I wanted to be everything but myself. But that mainly had to do with what I was exposed to from my parents. Now, not to blame my parents, but that's all they knew how to teach me, which was 1970s Korea going, oh, by the way, yeah, we didn't have any fun. So you don't either. So here's what you do, mm. right? You will study. Then you'll practice piano for three hours. Then you're going to compete on the piano lessons. Then you're going to also learn another instrument. And then you're going to go. And we didn't have hagwon, but we had like SAT courses. I guess that's mm. similar. Mm. And I remember thinking, geez, like that's not what my friends are doing, my American friends. Mm. So long story short, when people do some sense go, well, you're not Korean and we we dip, get defensive, but then they also go, but then you're not American. We're like, but we are. It's very difficult. So the Korean diaspora around the world have a very complex complexity to their identity, their relationship. And in some sense, they disliked being Korean growing up. Mm -hmm. A lot of us did. <clears throat> because, again, we're not in Korea. Very different if we were in Korea, like we would, we're Korean. There's, it's very homogeneous, much more diverse now. But when you're in America and you see everybody else not looking like you, and you're in the minority. And back in the day, nobody knew about Korean culture. Do you know that I was actually asked so many times growing up, so are you from North Korea? Because that's communist. And I'd mm -hmm. be like, oh, my gosh. But that's what you would get. And it can be very offensive. Now I look back and go, that's funny, because nobody would ever say that now. Much People are much more, look at how popular Korean culture is. So that's why it's done a lot for people like me, seeing that for our own mental health, because we actually had to hide being mm -hmm. Korean. So let's now think about when I'm in Korea. I actually don't mind now. Now, growing up, when I would come to Korea, which was pretty much every summer, I was told, why don't you speak Korean better, right? And I'd be like, darn it. Yeah, I can't. Sorry, I have an accent, right? Or I'd have trouble understanding. I used to resent that, too, and be like, great. So I'm not even accepted in Korea. Mm -hmm. So it was very hard, right? Now, I would say... But I'm saying this because I'm 50 years old, and it's me teaching this to others, which is why I became very passionate. I see myself and many young folks. They still mm -hmm. struggle now, even in a diverse country now. Mm -hmm. Even where people are talking about K-dramas, mm -hmm. they still struggle because they can. there's moments when people go, well, you're Korean. They're like, no, I'm not. I'm Korean-American or I'm Korean-Canadian. There's still that that exists because they're still in the minority. And then we do come to Korea. And th but I'm, I'm going to say this. I think Korea is much more accepting now than sometimes America. Like Koreans now will say, oh, you're you're from America or or Wegugin. OK, let me switch to English. I was like, what? Growing up, they'd be like, why don't you speak Korean? Now it's like, oh, yeah, you have an American accent. So <laughs> let me let me switch. I'll help you out. It's so surreal to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, what? Then I'll actually say, please speak Korean because I'm trying to improve my Korean. You know what I mean? <laughs> I am. I actually say, no, 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 speak Korean. But um, so that's a complex question because mm -hmm. it is the Korean diaspora around the world. Uh, you can ask somebody from Australia who's Korean Australian. They will also say the same thing. They also struggled mm -hmm. being Korean and leading with that. But then they're in Australia. Mm -hmm. Then they come to the U.S. and they have an Australian accent, which I've heard. I know some, someone like that. They're like, oh, my goodness, Jeannie. I'm, I don't know where I belong. Mm -hmm. So that still exists for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we get a little testy. They go, you're not Korean. You're not American. And we're sitting there going, oh, I guess that could be true. But gosh darn it, and this is what I teach. No, you are the expert of your narrative, your identity narrative. If you say you're Korean American, you are Korean American. You know, mm -hmm. and then live into that, though. Don't be like, I think I'm Korean American. You know, so I, I, that's a lot of my workshops with the, with the young folks mm -hmm. to really lean into that despite what people might say to you. And so I will say that's why I'm, I'm loving Korea now. I'm seeing the change. Um, and I think that's very important to see if for my own mental health, that I'm, <laughs> that I actually to the point of going, can someone just speak more Korean, please? Can we stop <laughs> speaking English? I'm actually eager for that. Mm. But look at where Korea's come. That was not like that in the 80s and 90s. Mm. Yeah. yeah. 
my this sounds like a flex, but I will get to a question afterwards. My son Edward, he was just voted Huedang of the Samhyakyan of his school. But the thing about as a as a mixed kid, but yeah. the thing about it is his name in Korean is Edward the Day be the Tizad. Yeah, you told Everybody me this. else has three syllables, right? And so they'll go down and he, he stands out a little bit. Yeah. But despite standing out, the kids in his class all voted for him rather than the other one. Oh. And I, I, I wasn't so much happy for him. I was happy for the other kids mm. that were willing to vote for him. So yeah. I agree with you yeah. that there is, I think, more That's... acceptance. And this is this is in the countryside. This is not in, in an international school. Oh, really? You know, this That's is, even more great. Uh, I thought so. And I think it's genuine. That's just one story. But that's uh, proof of genuine change. Yeah. I'm so curious about these names. Is it ever American, Korean or Canadian, Chinese? Do, do people do that according to their own narrative? Is it just a linguistic thing? Like we say black and white and north and south it just comes out that way mm -hmm. or does it ever flip around i've never seen a flip around like oh, if you're okay. korean like if your family's from korea but you were raised in china and even your generations and generations were raised in china they'll still say korean chinese okay mm -hmm. yeah and i don't I, I wish i could tell you the origin i don't know yeah, yeah, but yeah. Th if i guess you're korean as in you your ancestors were born in korea so i that's what i always say to people don't forget i i start we start with korean yeah, yeah, yeah. so I still see some MZs look at me so surprised, and then they'll start calling me Unni because we get close. Because I work with some of them, and they're like, "Oh, you, you are Korean," and then they'll go, "Actually, you're more Korean than like us." <laughs> and I'll be like, "Probably," because I still grew up very traditional. But I'm mm -hmm. proud to say that. And then they say it with some amusement, but a compliment, mm -hmm. and that's how I see it. And so that means a lot because, again, I'll tell you now, I still was so criticized here for not speaking Korean well. Mm -hmm. I could still get by, but they were like. Oh, kyopo. You know, it was, mm. and I hated that word kyopo. Mm. Now I say it going, I'm a kyopo. Mm. <laughs> because I just want to be clear, listen, if I struggle, it's why, that's why. But, mm. um, so very different. And, but I love that about Korea. They have become very um, accepting in that, in that sense. Mm. So different than it was back in the day. But I'm also going to say this. I don't want us to lose the traditional. This is, is this the gondemi? Yeah. I'm like, please don't lose the mm -hmm. traditionality of our yeah. culture too. Yeah. So I like seeing Today, I, I was it yesterday, I saw two Harabajis, probably in their 70s and 80s, holding on to each other, nice. walking up the park like they were helping each other. And I think I kind of filmed it as best I could because those are beautiful examples that I missed as a child mm. that I see now that I want the youth to see. Mm. You don't see that in the States. Mm. This is like, well, kachu, you know, kachu, kachu, you know yeah. all very together. There's benefit to that. Mm. So I, I love that. So that's the konden me. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's very. Yeah. Good. They do. That's the Jong. Do need yeah, to keep that going. Uh, before Jong, the Korean American story is it played out well in dramas and movies and representation? I was thinking of um, first. I thought of the book Pachinko as he was talking about this, and then Beef. I watched Beef. Yeah. From start, I thought that was ridiculous, but also really interesting. Yeah. There was Past Lives has mm -hmm. been popular, mm -hmm. and there was Different. another one that I forgot. There was a Minari. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, any comment? on these how they're played out yeah past lives i'll just be more personal about it past lives i related the most to okay yeah, yeah. um like nora kind of rep did you see it i know yeah okay. i've heard so yeah. much about it. It, it, it she represented kind of like yeah she came a little later to the u.s i think she was at least 10 or 11 which is why she had a childhood mm. boyfriend did you see it no. I highly recommend it. It's cute. Tail is in it. Mm. Just saying, you know, you tail. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, but I, I related to that, but not all of them. Not So here's the thing. There's no. diversity in the Korean-American story. No. Um, Minari was, I would say, they were more uh, farmers, poor farmers that came about, where I actually didn't relate at all to that story. Now, I related to the halmoni that the young kids thought were like, oh, the harmony is kind of eccentric. Yeah, I, I thought about that with my harmony going, oh, harmony doesn't get it, right? Yeah. But that's it. Otherwise, my story was very different. My parents came very highly educated to the U.S., and they spoke English. So hence why my Korean's not that good is because my parents spoke English at home, mm -hmm. and that was just because they chose to, but Minari, they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all different stories, and I, you need to see, we need to see more of those stories. Mm -hmm. What was the other one you mentioned? Pachinko, yeah. I mean, I related to some sense of that intergenerationality. And then what was the other one you mentioned? Beef. Beef. Beef did a good job. Um, I actually didn't finish it because it was it – was, I remember I was in a stressed out moment during my yeah. career yeah. and I needed a break. It's a little stressful. Yeah. But he portrayed the Korean American Christian experience very well. Mm. That is how I grew up. And mm. I was like, oh my gosh, which is why it resonated with a lot of Korean Americans. 
But overall, I we need to see more of those stories because mm-hmm. everybody has a different immigration story. Mm-hmm. Like my husband's is the exact opposite of me. His parents came with nothing. I think he said like thirty dollars. Wow. My parents came highly educated. My father was a doctor and came here, so mm-hmm. he was a sky. So mm-hmm. can you imagine the pressure I felt? Yeah. Um, <laughs> even though I was raised in the U.S., but he, yeah. So very different. But I appreciate my husband's upbringing, and he appreciates mine, and it's very different. So. You don't have to answer this if you don't want. 1974, that's just after uh, Park Tong Yi's Yushin uh, mm-hmm. revolution. He's yeah. starting putting the limits on men's haircuts, on mm-hmm. women's skirts. He's really cramping yeah, down. Yeah, when was that? Like what? That was 72, month? I believe. Oh, okay, okay. But it, it's around that time. Yeah. The reason for the emigrant, like you, you and your husband's families both went over there mm-hmm. despite the different circumstances. Yeah. Is it just let's go and start a new life? Is, are there political reasons? Do you have any? Inkling? I do know, and I don't yeah. mind sharing that. Now, he, immig- his family, I'll start with his family. He Im- immigrated in 1979, uh-huh. so he was almost 10. Okay. So he will still fondly watch the K-dramas like Ojingo Game and be yeah. like, I play that. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I love learning from my husband, and he'll remember being hit. We'll share about this. Back in the day, you were hit in school if you weren't listening. He goes, yeah, I got hit a lot. It's the love stick. <laughs> yeah, it, they would do that with yeah. the ruler. And so I went, oh, you did live during that era. So – he moved because I think they wanted a, they wanted to live the American dream. Mm. They that, that mm. still like that, but they're like, let's go for a better life. They were. He actually says, yeah, we were very poor, mm. and my parents thought, and they went without a college education to the U.S. And I think they did do better in Los Angeles. My parents and my dad told me my dad was very ambitious doctor. He did graduate from Seoul National University and the medical school. He's like, I'm going to go to the U.S. and mm. become uh, like get a, a American fellowship mm. as a doctor that his intention was to come back because he was the first son. Mm. He never went back, which devastated his mom and Mm. dad. But they understood it because I remember them visiting often. But he was supposed to come back, but he tells me the story. It's kind of emotional, actually. He goes, but I saw my oldest daughter, which is me, because he wrote a book um, as a a neurologist. And he he remembers seeing me at age seven going, that's, I was done my fellowship. I was done my residency. I was a full-time doctor. I could start a private practice in Korea. But I saw my seven-year-old and I went, she was so acclimated to U.S. culture, I couldn't mm. take her back. Mm. Which means my, my parents really wanted to come to America and I guess they saw me successful and they envisioned I wouldn't do as well switching over at age seven. Because mm. I had a strong personality, I still do. But then they chose to stay. And obviously my, did, my dad started his own private practice in the U.S. He also came to the U.S. with one goal. Mm. Besides being a doctor, mm. he goes, one goal, I'm going to master the American, the English mm. language, which he already knew, but no accent. Wow. My dad does not have an accent. Wow. He, uh, in college, he would go, "Is this Papa John? I'm, I, you know, this is for Jeannie Bay, my maiden name. Uh, there's a Papa John pizza order. I'm like, I didn't order Papa John's. He's like, Ah ha ha, this is Appa. I was like, Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, my dad really did master it. My mom that's still good. has an accent, but yeah, no, my dad was determined, and um, but that's why he chose not to move back. But he took us as much as, I think we went every summer. We were privileged to come every summer or every other summer, which is why I didn't like it because Korea is so hot. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, um, but I started appreciating, I would say, I think I remember in high school go, when we went like maybe once in high school because we were so busy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, um, I remember going, oh, Korea's not that bad. When was it? 1988, we were here for the Olympics, wow. not to watch the Olympics, but here. Yeah. And I remember thinking it was cool. Like, oh, Korea's hosting the Olympics. So I started changing, seeing Korea change. So I saw Korea develop. You know Song Su Dong? Yeah. It's all cool now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't back in the day. Mm-hmm. When people tell me <laughs> two years ago, people said Song Su Dong's like up and coming. I'm like, Song Su Dong? Like where my um, Chin Halmoni Harbaji resided mm-hmm. when I was growing up, it was Shikol. <laughs> really? It was like dirt roads. Wow. No sewage. I mean, back in the 80s, the sewage system in Korea was so bad. Mm-hmm. So think of a child, me, coming from America going, what's with the smell of Korea? You could smell the sewage everywhere. Now mm. when I see Korea going, plastic, paper, metal, I'm like, what? <laughs> I mean, I love it, but I'm also like, why is it so so different? Mm. But Song Su Dong, I still crack up going, it was not like that back in the day. Mm. Just saying. Now it's all retro and mm. cool. Yeah. But yeah, that was my dad and very different, yeah. It's great. I, I love that accents are changing now. We're becoming more accepting of different accents yes. and different voices and, and, and different ways. And the development of the city is incredible. Digital media city used to just be a dump. And now it's right? home no, to I all the... It it's cool. Yeah, now it's home to all the broadcast stations and everything yeah. like that. Is there still, you know, so a, a desire to for young people to go abroad? Is there still the American dream amongst your generation like there was back in the 70s? Or is it like, no, this is pretty cool now? Or... Mm. Yeah, like, 
Um, when I was in like high school, we talked about like short visit to somewhere mm. as a tour, mm. but like. I mean, like second year in my university now. So mm. like nowadays, my friends are talking about, oh, Yunsa, are you going to like apply for Disney internship for like abroad experiences, or are you going to like apply for like this internship or mm. like exchange student or something like that? Mm. And from that, I really sense that oh, we still have the desire to like experience the outer mm. outer part of Korea, mm. because like we see lots of them in like Korean media's. And we are eager to expre- experience them in mm. real life, mm-hmm. mm. and I do too. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. still that desire. And I, I talk to lots of parents, right? Who Korean parents, like mm. Korean national parents, will still talk to me and say, "Oh yeah, if you know any English, um, like internships or connections, they're very eager." They actually told me the number one thing is having their kids experience an, an American experience. I'm like, really? <laughs> 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 I'm like, but then I get it because. In the U.S., people want to experience Korea mm. or Japan. I mean, there was that global experience. Yeah, yeah you want to. So I, I, but I crack up. I, st- I still see with parents, they're desperate to have their kids learn English or go to some English exper- like American mm. experience or a tour or even go to American colleges. Mm. You know, even though I'm like, I think Korean colleges. Are, it's so funny how I see. It's if you go to a sky or even a Korean college, it's so hard. I'm like amazed where we like downplay U.S. colleges, mm. unless of course they go. No, we mean we mean Harvard. I'm like, okay, fine. You want your kids to go to Harvard. I crack up. Mm. So they, it's still that, yeah, they still put it on a pedestal. And you yeah. see Americans like us going, why? <laughs> the American dream is still very it's strong. Still very it's strong. interesting to hear it, it from Yunso, but still. I help them all, with all the graduate school applications and everything like that. It's about 10, 12 a year. And it's all, I'm going to America. I'm going to go to America. I'm going to go to America. Mm. And that desire is still there. I mean, I read all the stories and things like that. And it's like, I'm not sure I want to go to America. Yeah, but for the we young joke Koreans, about it in America. We're like, yeah. we'd rather be in Korea. Yeah, but for the young Koreans, <laughs> they still see it that way. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's good because it is still a good experience, yeah. you know. And my son's the opposite. My son attended Yonsei last summer, the mm-hmm. summer program. Mm-hmm. I did that in 1992, and that, that did change my life in a good way. He absolutely loved it. He barely learned Korean, but mm-hmm. he absolutely loved it. And I just went, that's great. Mm-hmm. I, w- I want you to be exposed. And now he's thinking, I'll do a semester abroad. It's similar. Mm. It's like the mm. and th- that's his heritage. So I, I, it does it make sense to me that he wants to be in Korea and master the Korean language. Plus, he loves K-pop. Mm. What do your kids think of your social media profile and everything that you do? Because I've seen your husband in quite a few of the things <laughs> yeah. and things. He's and you said supportive. he watches. He says hi. Yeah, he watches. <laughs> a, a very nice gentleman. Hi, hello yeah. to him back as well. <laughs> but like, is it? It's kind of weird with your mum, I think, isn't yeah. it? How does that work? You've got tens of thousands of followers online. Your content's yeah. out there. You're talking about your life and your mental health. And your kid's just going, mum, yeah. shut up. Or they like, go mum. Yeah, they, they're they in between. They, okay. they're, they're when, uh, And I'm not very active on TikTok just because I'm not. This is the this is the Gen X in me. I'm like, what's TikTok? It's getting banned in America, I read today. For, not for sure, though, right? It has okay. to get voted. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it has but, to be passed by the yeah, Senate, sorry, but that's going to be a revolt. If, uh, uh, but anyways, I'm so I'm more on Instagram. I think they're they're proud. I think that's a, I think they like it. In fact, when I ask them, I need to do a video with you. Come on, yeah, it's, it's a brand partnership. I mean, come on. they're like, fine. I go, mommy's making money to pay for your call. Then they're like, okay. <laughs> and especially my boys. Now my daughter's a little less reluctant, which is funny because she loves social media. Yeah. But sometimes she's like. Oh, I gotta fix my hair. I'm like, calm down. But she, I think they like it overall. Uh, um, yeah, and they're actually very supportive. And they'll even say things like, "Oh, my friend saw mommy's reel on something," and he was like, "They'll say it, it's so cringy." But I'm like, "Do you really think it's cringy?" No, they're like, "No, that we think it's cool." You mm-hmm. know. So I, I think they do think it's cool. Yeah. What's it like? But I'm still their mom. <laughs> yeah. What's it like being on social media and it being you and there being. I had a look before, 70,000 followers on mm. Insta. Which I don't think is across. a lot compared to some, if I'm being Korean, right? You compare to people. Oh, come on, <laughs> come on. That's a, that's a bit of a flex that, That's so funny. But um, I mean... I sound so Korean. We yeah. talk about <laughs> social enough. media yeah. being bad for... Or harmful for our health and things like this. But you're on it. What's it like to manage that? What's it like to have brand partnerships and be yeah. doing all that well now i have some help because i'm like i can't edit every video like so i do i just it's great to start expanding my team okay. i do all the content but i'll be like i don't have time to edit this one can you do this one you can tell the difference if i'm editing something and someone else is editing mm. something yeah. they do a much better job but most of them i'll do with all the contents mine but i'm getting busier and i always say this i am not a full-time content creator mm. though people are like you are one i go i am but 
I am a full-time, like I would say, a licensed clinician and speaker. I'm much more proud of that. Not like I'm not proud of my social media, Mm -hmm. but I, I guess it's a clinician thing or a researcher thing. I like being able to educate. Yes, I use my platform for that, but in real life, I like doing workshops. You saw me kind of doing that. I love doing things like that. I am, you know, now an author, and all of that makes me proud, and the social media is I would say a tool Mm. to leverage that or at least build that, uh, what's the word, brand image. Mm. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, I can let it slide, which I do. I will not post something every day. If I I can't do it, I can't do it. Mm. I'm busy sometimes doing lectures and stuff. And so that is more important to me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have that presence, but um, it's hard to keep up at times. Mm -hmm. And I purposely, if I cannot do it, I'll be like, well, I'm not going to post this today. (laughs) So I can't do it. I'm busy writing this thesis or something, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It must be hard to manage that because I don't spend that much time online, but I do I do notice among some people that they're online a lot and that they're they're using it, I think, for their own mental health, for their own courage. But they're there. And especially if maybe they're following you or Mm -hmm. there's always a message and there's always a reply and you're like, that's a bit much. You know, I I don't reply. Okay, I I get all I read every DM. I'll tell people that. Yeah. I'll barely reply, but what I'll do is I'll reply on my story going, hey, I got this interesting DM Mm. or whatever, and sometimes I don't reply. But overall, just so you know, I'm not on social media much. Mm. I'm there to post, Mm. and I'll look at some of the people's on my stories Mm. and stuff, but I'm actually not on much at all. Mm. When I scroll, I'll be honest, here's what I look for. Mental health news, Korean news. Um, I'll follow some of my favorite people, and that's it. And so I'm not scrolling. Mm. That's my own mental health. And I don't also have time, right? Uh, but I do love reading every news article out there on Korean latest news and U.S. news and mental health. So that's mm. where you'll see me. That's why I repost a lot of articles. Mm. I'm like, this one's a good one. Or or like Yunup News uh, talking about like the latest person out of Kunde. I'm like, look, he's leaving Kunde. And now it's time to watch my K-drama. Mm. So K-drama news, those are the stuff I'll read. But that's it. Because I want to limit that. Can I tell you a story about leaving the military? I told Yun so on this yeah. on the way over. Um Last week, I'm at Hanyang University. I've got 50 kids in the class. They're from all over the world. They're, it's the international class. And I'm just doing these dagenjagi sogas, like little introductions. Mm-hmm. Tell me something. Who are you? Where are you from? What, what's going on with you? This one girl from Indonesia, she said she was a huge BTS fan and she loves this and loves this. I said, who's your favorite? And this one. And so I said, what do you think? Are they going to get back together after they've done all their military service? Yeah, I didn't know that was a bad question. She went <laughs> She went quiet for about 10 seconds. She looked down for about 20 seconds. And this is a long time in front of the class. Yeah. And then noisily in front of 50 people she was meeting for the first time just erupted into tears. Oh. I, I, I know. And I just sat there and went, what have I done? I'm getting can't. This is horrible. But I didn't know just like how emotionally involved these people were. B- what well, some BTS. people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, yes, I should especially say. Especially like BTS. That. Um, yeah. And then some of their favorite K-pop stars when mm-hmm. they went go to the... And I'll be honest, I feel a little sadness when I go, when I see an actor or somebody. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that's sad. And BTS, I felt a little lost too. Like, I would say I'm ARMY, but I'm not so rabid ARMY. Mm-hmm. But then I shouldn't say that because I like to tell people, tell people, who are you to judge how much of a fan you are? But mm-hmm. let's just not go there. But... Don't yuck someone's yum. Yeah, I've exactly. Heard that uh, and really. someone actually yeah. said, "Oh, you're a rookie." Uh, not to me, but someone yeah. said to someone next to me, "Oh, you're a rookie army." And I went, "It doesn't matter." Like, mm. like you know, so I they saw my irritation. Mm. <laughs> I was like, "This person is definitely an art. They love BTS, and of course they're sad because I think they were just not justifying that this person was sad and only knew BTS for like a year. Mm. In fact, sometimes it's more sad when you just get to know somebody like BTS and then they leave, right? For Kunde temporarily we would mm, hope mm. but no people were um i i did respond to some dms of people very sad about particularly bts mm. yeah. yeah that's they did it well though they did it in like increments yeah. can you imagine if they all left i mean <laughs> and then they're smart they we still have some, like sugar's not sugar who's about to release something um jungkook's releasing stuff all over the place Jungkook, isn't but it? then is it j-hope wait why am i drunk someone's about to release something yeah, okay. at the end of the month mm. that's great they mm. they're smart yeah mm. it gives people that like Wow, we still have our favorite, and then there's a countdown for Jin. Jin is coming back in like a hundred days. Yeah, mm. wow, good on. It's, and yeah. so there will be non-stop BTS related That's content right. until That's very 2025, funny. and then they're come back concert, which yeah. is going to be chaotic. And full it, respect to them for doing it, though. By the yeah. way, because I'm sure they could have played. Look how big we are. We're not doing that. But yeah. there's this idea, and I've asked people this about you know, are you Korean? Korean? They'll say, have they done their military service? Then they're Korean. Mm. I've heard that too. 
How do you feel as a female? Can I ask you this? Uh, is there talk amongst females of like they should be going to the military too, like in the U.S.? Um, you know, like we sometimes talk about like men serving in military services, mm -hmm. and some of the international students take it more seriously. Like mm -hmm. us, like Korean women, do not really take it like deadly. Yeah. But like one American girl told me that. Oh, I feel so sorry for them losing like two years of their life mm. because it's their youth. They have to try for their goals and dreams. They have to chase their like dream jobs mm. or like they have to enjoy their 20s, mm. but they're not doing it. But like we are so used to it. Yeah. So yeah. Like, okay. So it's their canon event. They have to do it anyways. Yeah. We're kind of that. But like K pop fans are like being, um, you know, like they're being emotional over their oppas. Mm. <laughs> and I get it. Yeah, I mean, and you know what? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, even even uh, are you about global K-pop fans or Korean based. Both. Okay, mm, but yeah. Koreans understand more, right? This is yeah. a military, mandatory military. Mm. Also, technically, we should share, right? We're still we're not we didn't have an armistice with North Korea. Mm. So when I share that, people get it. They're like, oh, we didn't realize that because global fans will get upset going. Mm. You should never be. You know, it's very individualistic. You shouldn't ever be mandated to go. But mm. this is. The Korean culture and we mm. and it's for safety and for mm. the country and we never know right mm. right what's going to happen so I, love, I understand it I love mm. this from George Orwell uh, people sleep peacefully in their beds because rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf mm. and Seoul is a pretty safe place but yeah. you only have to go uh, a few tens of kilometers north and there are young men standing there with sniper rifles in the DMZ That's right. in the summer and the winter yeah. surrounded by landmines and they don't want to be there yeah. And they don't want to be and there, but they, they are but they there. Are there. And I they mean, run the risk of dying. They do. And they run and the so, risk of North Korean missiles, whatever. Yeah, uh, we uh, still have a very tender, sensitive relation. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think people forget that, right? Seeing mm -hmm. how, you know, they don't know that we could be on the brink of anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, but I share, I share that. I go, that is why it's mandatory. We're not, we're not in like a, a U.S. situation where mm -hmm. it's like that. But I, I, what I wanted to know is do females in the, in Korea mm -hmm. want to go to the military? Oh, I'm not. I'm not talking for everyone, yeah. but some of them want to go because, like, they do not really like inequality. Because, mm. like, some of the men, like, despise women for not going to military. But I have seen that. Yeah. yeah. But most of the women do not really feel like to be, like, go into military, like, for, like, no choice. Right. Mm. But, what about but they your want personal more equality. experience. Personally, and so you, you don't want to go there yet? Uh, <laughs> I would be the weakest soldier there. <laughs> yeah. And I sense, be okay, I shouldn't, this is Nunchi talking. This is my own Nunchi talking. Uh. But I assume that even though there's whole, this whole hoopla of BTS not, remember all of that? Should they go? Should they not go? I just thought it made sense if they did go um, because I felt like they would want to go. I mean, even though it paused their career, I felt like they could use a break. I was thinking their mental health. Number one, maybe they could use a break. And number two, I think it would they wanted to for the sake of their country. Now, I'm not, I don't, I'm not speaking for them. It's just what I thought would make sense mm. for their own identity journey yeah. of being Korean mm -hmm. and male, yeah. you know? So that's what – anyway, so – and it goes by fast. I mean, I know people are like, oh, my God, 22 months or whatever – but it goes by fast. Jin mm. is coming back in 100 days. Yeah. Yeah. And it shows the strength of Korea's system, I think, because mm. they could have just waved the card, but then what does it do to the, the motivation or the confidence of all the other men that do go? So if they say, true. just because I work in a convenience store, I'm right, not a, right. I don't love my country as much. So at football on Wednesday, one of the young guys there, his name is Dong Hyun, I said to him, how's your military service going? Because he's doing it in Seoul in an office. And he said, I got one week left and I don't want it to end. Oh. That's exactly what he said to me. And I was like, okay. would you, uh, excuse me? But I've heard it a lot that sometimes uh, men, they like the discipline. They like the order. They like the regime. They like they don't have to choose what to eat for lunch. They don't have to know because what to do. Done. There's an order for them. And they, they get up, they exercise, they wash, they eat. And yeah. they, there's structure to their lives that I think that yeah. some people. Well, that's some, right. Some, some people, people like. And, and then you see the DPs, right? The DP. So I, one time someone asked, uh, and I, I said, I can't answer that. I don't know what the reality is. I'm thinking maybe that years ago it could have been like that. Obviously, yeah. everything's dramatized, right? But I don't think everything is because they were like, that's terrible, the Korean military. I go, this is a drama. And that's my other message about K-dramas. It's still a drama. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I go, guys, I understand because I'll see some people get – first of all, I don't want it to damage their mental health. But mm -hmm. I'm like, I need you to just take a step back and look at not the scenario, which is completely fake, 
but the people are real, like as in the characters' emotions mm-hmm. and character. So anyway, DP came up a lot going, is this legit? I go, well, I think they're probably a reflection of what it used to look like or what it could look like, right? You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Any military, even the U.S. military, yeah. yeah. And it, it was released in 2021, 2022, DP, and it was based on like 2014, 2015, and that was just before the arrival of smartphones. That really oh, cleaned it up. So okay. before yeah, because- that... One of my producers on the radio, uh, I remember she told me about sort of 10 odd years ago, David, there's two things you can't really talk about here. One is North Korean human rights and the other is the South Korean military. Be careful what you say. Mm. Other than that, go nuts, right? <laughs> and that's what she told me, but she, okay. t- she very yeah. specifically, don't throw shade on the Korean military here. Mm. And it was only after I think the Korean military went through some internal cleaning up and bringing in smartphones, people could take photos and record their seniors. Of course. It's only after that happened that then they made the document. Uh, they made the DP, DP showing how bad it was. Yeah, so yeah, I, I it think was like it worked used in that to. relationship. Yeah, and obviously they'll still dramatize a little bit more just for entertainment's sake, right? So I always say yeah. that. So, yeah. Let's talk about your favorite drama. By the okay. way, Jacques Lacan, the uh, French psychoanalysis he said that we access reality through fantasy by the way that we need to go through these stories so you were just playing out this idea that they're not real they are but some people believe that we access reality through those fantasies and that's how we can get closer to the truth and that's how we can get right there mm-hmm. in uh your new upcoming book how k dramas can transform your life genie mm-hmm. this is labeled as the first ever book that discusses the benefits of k dramas mental health it has a list of your top me, 20 career we put it that uh, top 20 korean dramas at the back mm-hmm. the top 5 hometown mm-hmm. cha 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 mm. mr sunshine the mm-hmm. greatest love mm-hmm. reply 1988 my mister and the top one my mr naya joshi mm. now i've seen this as well mm-hmm. I watched this with my mom, my wife, my sister-in-law. Oh. We did this kind of communal watching oh. while my mom was over. That's and nice. And we put it on. Did you see it? No. Okay. Mm. I highly recommend. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> will watch it. I, I, I get the. I, I want you to explain it because I think yeah. it's for middle-aged people. Tell me about Naya Joshi. Tell me about my mister starring um, Lee sung and mm-hmm. Ayu. Yeah. I think that's why Lee sung death, I'm just going to bring that up, impacted me, but also a lot of people, you know? Um Naya Adeshi, okay, so my mister I saw yeah. not in 2018 when it came out. I saw it in 2020 mm. after I heard about it a couple times going, oh, yeah, you know what? I have time to see a K-drama. I will say the first couple of episodes, I was like, what is this? Mm. Why are people? <laughs> it's melancholy. It's actually not my typical really go into it. Usually I like a little bit of the lightheartedness in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It starts out right uh, and not even I don't even say dark, realistically melancholy because uh-huh. it's not dark. It, it just was like, oh, my gosh, what's this boring office strong? But I kept something kept, kept me watching because I heard good things about it. I would say around three or four. You have to I tell people try to get through the first four episodes. Mm-hmm. I need you to get there. And then the plot thickens a little bit. You know, she um, she like uses a wiretap. The whole thing is she's basically a down and out girl IU who by the way does brilliant job acting it pleasantly surprised me I was like what because you just see her as a Korean singer but you don't see her as IU in my no you, not at all you see, her you see her as a very yeah, yeah just 21 year old cynical lo- depressed kid or you know and just mm. really down and out but why I like it the main reason why I, I my title is how k-dramas can transform your life is based on that k-drama you see transformation mm. transformation is pretty powerful in someone's life you see her, but also him, slowly transform. It does take an entire 16 episode to see her trajectory mm. of being changed through someone's goodness, someone's kindness that she overhears. It's not even she witnesses. She sees it firsthand, but she witnesses it more through because of wiretap. I mean, I think it's a brilliant plan. She had to mm. wiretap his phone. She was bribing him. I mean, it was like this whole office drama, and she was doing it for money. But then as she was listening and learning about this guy and hearing his goodness to his brothers, his mom, she overheard every conversation. She was like, this is a good person. But then I love the transformation of her moment when the typical thing is if you hear about this girl who owns who owes money to loan sharks, right? That, mm-hmm. That's her story. But he, there's this one action where he actually gets beat up for her. Mm-hmm. And usually you don't see that. You see like a boyfriend doing that. And this is another reason why I love the story especially the Western folks loving the story. You don't see 
sexually explicit relationship. People just would assume, oh, middle-aged man, 21-year-old, ew. That was a thought. I even heard that in Korea. It was some of the criticism. That's what you thought, too. I mean- Before and, I saw it. Yeah, right. But then it, it's not like that at all. Now, she has a crush on him, which I think is because she thinks he's a great person, but then mm-hmm. that shifts- Oh. When she just realizes he's just a great guy, I hope I find someone like him. That kind of oh. that kind of purity, only Koreans can do that because they showed Chung. Mm. So I named my title thinking of that drama because I absolutely love the character transformation in her, and then him. And there's moments where they actually bring up things like "I'm gonna be happy." Some of those quotes are like. In other K dramas, do they say I'm gonna be happy? I'm gonna work hard to be happy. I deserve to be happy. They would say things like that that you want to hear. And guess what? In my research, that was the drama that many folks liked all ages. Mm. Mm. MZs when mm. I said, "What's your favorite drama?" They'd be like, "I go and then I go and they they would struggle going, oh, because I know there's a lot." I go, well, "Mine, my favorite is easy." And I, I just they're like, "Oh, mm. me too," and I mean it. And it would be bo- my way to bond with Koreans here. Because as I was writing this book, I would ask people, and I would say 80% of the time, it was my Mr. Two. Yeah. So it was all ages. I know it seems, you know, it could relate to my age group, but no, you're seeing a 21-year-old girl being changed by a man that she has an innocent friendship with. Mm. And he tells her, you changed my life too. And so it's just beautiful. Like, I could get emotional talking mm. about it, but you see an obvious transformation for her. Mm. And... And then because of what she does for him later on, it's like a lot of sacrifice. Yeah, she basically changes his career around. But I really love that scene when he goes, you didn't feel sorry for me. Like, so he's a 45-year-old middle-aged man going through a middle-aged crisis. His wife cheats on him, right? And then you see all this reconciliation. But she, she, he tells her, you, you still liked me as a person or you still thought I was great or cool. I wasn't pathetic to you. It's a very Korean thing, I think, to have that pride of like, he's 40, like, you know, he's like a, what, manager, director level, but she didn't seem that way. She loved his character. Mm. And he says in this very sad moment of like, thank you for not seeing me like pathetic. You, I'm not, you saw me this way. And she's like, no, you deserve the best. That is like a brilliant show. Mm. I mean, I, it's like that same writer wrote my liberation notes. Very well I done, I didn't too. know that. Yeah. I liked my... Mm. I know, Hibangi. you talked about it. Yeah. That's how I got, in, got into talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, she wrote that. And Same so one. she focuses on the character growth mm. very well. So does a lot of other K-dramas. If I'm trying to sell it to you, I am. <laughs> but it is a great K-drama. Now, mental health-wise, there are other dramas, I think, highlighted mental health more obviously. Mm. But that is a classic, tried-and-true story of mental health. Every day... Uh, difficult emotions mm. but then also experiencing joy mm. and transformation and I think, I think I underestimated that show because I really didn't know that two main characters like changed like each other in a good way they transformed each that's other brilliant. she's only 21 he's 40 something years old and nothing else in common except mm. they worked at the same place and she even says um, that moment he changed her life was when he asked her to go to with oh. the team she said no one ever took notice he did and he's like, just come, we're here. And then she went. And that was, I think that was my interpretation of the moment of her transformation. Mm. Even though she was still it, behind the scenes doing all this politics work for the boss guy, the wiretapping is a brilliant part of the show. There's a point in the scene, though, she also says she felt sad she could no longer hear his footsteps because she stopped doing that. And she put down the wiretap and she goes, I even loved hearing the sound of your footsteps. Mm. There's moments I just went, who, this brilliant writer, like just things like that. You, um, you can get changed by someone's kindness and goodness. And, mm. um, but it wasn't just his kindness and goodness to her. That mm. was not it. She was transformed by seeing his kindness and goodness to others. That's really good witness. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved it. I never knew it was the same writer, but I, I remember yeah. specifically saying while watching Naya Joshi, uh, to the people in the room, I bet this was written by a man. <laughs> and I got it completely wrong. My, yeah. my nunchi was uh-huh. off. But I love the supporting cast. I love that they went to Jong Hee's pub every yeah. night. There yeah. was the two brothers that were both just like deadbeat, mm-hmm. but one of them had a, a, a ex actress that was in. L- there was that going yeah, on. Yeah, there was a lot of side stories. Mm. There was Buddhism being played out yeah. through it, with Jong Hee's ex becoming a Buddhist monk. Yeah. But it was this idea that no matter how terrible their lives were, and just there was no big billionaire lifestyle going on for them. 
They all went to the same kind of pub. They went to their Tangol Sunim Suljib. They all went there every night mm -hmm. and they just met each other and they talked. And if somebody didn't turn up, they'd be like, where is this person? And mm. I like that very much. The Tongne Chingu, the yeah, neighborhood this, friends. It's a very Tongne thing. Which is yeah. really cool. I really enjoyed that. But I think you, uh, yeah. And she was also changed by that community because they would, I remember there's like a scene where they walked her home because mm. they're all good friends. So they oh. were just doing the courteous thing. Mm. But then she says, come samnida, or she bows. Mm. That's not in her character. She's kind of cynical, could care less, was cause was kind of rude, could, would speak maybe panmal. But that moment when she said thank you mm. was also another example of her transformation going, oh, people can be good. I mean, mm. yeah, it's just, it's very mm. well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A question with language and subtitles and chondemal and panmal, honorific mm. language and onnis and hyongs, which is such a big part of it. Subtitles will often say gilsu. Yeah. And, and they will have somebody's name, but the whole time they're saying Hyong. Yeah. Or the whole time they're saying Nuna. Uh, the, right. Uh, but the, the, the English subtitles will say... You know what irritates the U.S. fans? Mm. They're like, we know they're saying older sister. I mean, they know Anni mm. Opa. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows that by now. I'm like, why, why can't you just say older brother? But I guess, yeah, we don't do that. I mean, why can't they just interpret or even just leave the Anni? Because by now, globally, everybody mm. knows what that means. But yeah. it's, I find it less irritating than... The global fans, they'll mm. be like, "That is so irritating, Genie." Yeah. We know that it's not mm. saying Genie the name. We know it's saying Unni. So I think it's for the non-fans that I'm thinking yeah. of. I'm thinking yeah. of somewhere. No disrespect, mum. Yeah. For my mum that wouldn't necessarily pick up on yeah. all of these things no, immediately. True. Yeah, and she's just watching it. And I almost feel like sometimes people are watching different dramas mm. based on the subtitles. This is not to say one is better or right. worse, but right. I, I feel like some do the subtitles really get it across. No, right? Especially when they they're based sometimes. so much on Jong and these Korean relationships. Do you see what I mean yeah. by that? There's this yeah. real kind of intertwined thing that. Uh, Netflix sometimes gets it wrong. Mm. You yeah. know when you're want this is uh, this is why I sometimes am grateful that I do get the Korean translation because I'll go like I'll pause it go that translation's <laughs> terrible. But you know US fans are starting to catch on too because mm. they watch the K drama enough they're like we knew that translation was off. I'm like yeah that is so there's a better way of saying it but I get it. I mean you're mm. translating tons of stuff but there's some things you just can't translate. Mm. Even if we were watching some other show in another language, I think I believe that the same nu nuances are there. Mm. It's hard to translate chong. You know, they didn't use that word chong, but it's there. It's mm -hmm. all about that. Even Whiting mm -hmm. has so many meetings. Yeah. What did they say in that show? They said Whiting. I think they actually said Whiting. Whiting. Yeah. I can remember from that show they used te te te, like spit it out, get rid of all these bad thoughts yeah. or something. Say te te te. Yeah. Like, they will do that. Yeah. <laughs> they, it, yeah, I'm glad you like that yeah. show. Yeah, it's mm. a good show. Is is Jong still a th like we we we've had your uh, M -Z, M -Z, Z generation opinion mm -hmm. of Han. Chung, yeah. Chung? Talking about Chong Chong. Yeah, yeah Chong Chong is here still. Okay. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like. If I am to like buy my friend a coffee because she looks tired but she didn't tell me, that's a jong. Mm. And like if my friend is struggling from something and she she tells me to like she asks asks for help and mm. I do something for her, mm. that's always jong. Mm. And for my mom or my mom to me or my father, yeah. that's all jong I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I tell you, um it's in my book. Uh i I think I end it toward the end of my now my son, who's your age, um, they're 20, 20 years old, saw Chong play out two years ago. And that's when I knew he started really getting the Korean culture. We're at Kwangjang mm Shijang. -hmm. And it's like chaos. It's like 12 o'clock lunchtime. And we're all starving and we're grouchy. It's the night before we go back to the U.S. And it's 105 degrees. <laughs> okay, So it's like July. My sons wanted um, mulmandu. Mm -hmm. And so we go to, you know, in Kwangjang Shijang, one of the stands. And... I order for them, and then there's no seat for me, and that's fine because mm -hmm. I'm like, you guys eat, and it's it's there's like three harmonies on a bench. There's probably room for only one son, mm -hmm. but they're like this. <laughs> mm. my, I caught that, but my son later told me he caught that. Mm -hmm. He's like, isn't that Chung, mommy? I was like, yeah. Like I go, you're right. They they just they didn't say anything. They're just like this, and then. Because there's fans blowing, I guess they saw that my sons didn't have napkins. I saw this too, and they just handed them the napkins. Oh. But my son's like, that's so cool. You don't see that in the U.S. Mm. I just went, that's cool that you saw that too. And he talked about it, and that's how we left our trip mm. with that moment that my son really thought. Mm. He goes, I think that's Chong. I'm I like, would I say that's right. the nunchi with the Chong. 
Yeah, yeah, but still, yeah, yeah. the nunchi. You're right, because the nunchi is a big part of Korean culture too. But just even that unspoken, like we're trying to make room, but there's like no room. Mm. Like, so my youngest son like sat on the very edge. But the fact that they do that, yeah, and it's clearly 105 degrees and it's hot. I just thought that's so sweet, mm. you know? Yeah. The nunchi is doing things without being asked. I've always thought that, yeah. you know, Observing. in other cultures, you say, excuse me, or excuse yeah. me, can I sit here? Can I get something? In Korea, it's just like, you're meant to know that I want to sit here. Yeah. You're meant to yeah. do this. That get up and move. Thing or... There's nunchi big. on the subway. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I, like, my husband, I crack up. I see they, they, they see us coming in together. Mm -hmm. Someone will move. So we sit, I'm sitting there going, you didn't have to do that, but mm. nunchi. Mm. I'm like, they notice we're together. Yeah. But I just think that's brilliant. Yeah. And so I'm Nuna's nunchi, right? Yeah. What I talk about. And I I use nunchi, well, first of all, I'm Korean. So I heard it growing up. Mm. Nunchi up so nunchi, you know. But I heard it from, uh, like, uh, my mom, I would say, what is she? Grand aunt. Mm. So my mom's aunt. Growing up early on when I was young, I forget what I called her, maybe like emo harmony or whatever, but she told me and she told my mom in front of me and I think I was like maybe six or seven Jeannie has nunchi mm. nunchi palo Jeannie and I don't know what I did I can't remember but I remember that phrase and mm. I remember it was a compliment mm. and she gave a hint and my mom I, you know how you feel as a child my mom's like oh I'm glad she said that she mm. got approval of my like you know my, my aunt that stuck with me mm. and growing up I'll be honest with you. I was told I had good nunchi. Mm -hmm. And so it, it kind of builds your confidence up going, yeah, I think I do. I was I was quick to act or mention something or notice something and I would say it. Mm -hmm. Like I would now sometimes nunchi you're not supposed to say it, but in American style I would say it. I'm like, "Hey, are you uncomfortable?" Like I and as a therapist, I say things like, "We can stop. Mm -hmm. I can see you're uncomfortable. I have to do that in my work." Or if I'm speaking to a room in a workshop, I got to be able to say, "All right, John, you had that look right now. Can I ask what that's about? And I'll notice that if I'm speaking. And I'll call, and they'll, 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 this is a mental health workshop, so they'll be like, yeah, it's this way, way right? So that's why I had to call my, my whole platform Nunchi, Nuna's Nunchi. Nuna just went with Nunchi because I use Nunchi in my work mm -hmm. to do my job well. Mm -hmm. And if someone doesn't want to, for instance, if someone comes in to see me and I'm trying to figure out what, they're not telling me something, like right? Because I'm like, I'm trying to figure out this this case here. I have to ask some difficult and probing questions and sometimes that takes my nunchi to mm -hmm. ask point blank going what are you not telling me mm. you know and then they'll be like oh right <laughs> or I need you to tell me something you know and they'll be like what What do I so that takes nunchi mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so Agreed. I like that word I, li I like it too there's um just with Jong very quickly mm. I, I believe I sent it to you at the time there was a there was a news reporter standing outside in Gwangamun, a young 20-year-old, 20s news reporter in the pouring rain. Mm -hmm. And then some Ajoshi comes and stands oh. beside her holding up some umbrella. And he just mm. really tries to make himself hidden. They're but both just, Korean? They're both Korean. Oh. It's happening in Korea. But it's just this, you're doing the news and I'm just going to stand here and hold an umbrella. Just a random Ajoshi. Uh, just a random Ajoshi, an umbrella over it. And you could see this look on her face. is like, she's... That's so cute. And that's not weird. That's okay. She's yeah, processing, she's processing it. That's, oh. With Nunchi, sometimes my uh, international students will say, Professor, when I get on the subway, I feel like everybody's looking at me. And I'm like, they are. You're <laughs> feeling the Nunchi. That's how every Korean <laughs> you're feels. You're a foreigner. No, I'm, no, yeah. no, no, you're becoming Korean. Because oh, sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. Koreans know they're being watched all the time and they're yeah. being observed. And we watch like, everybody. Yeah, we watch everybody. <laughs> Nunchi Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so sometimes the, it's a side eye, like yeah, not good. Exactly. I'd be like, she just gave me, she gave me Nunchi. What did yeah. I do wrong? Yeah. You just know. Um, but it's, 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 that's the Koreanness. That's mm. the quick wit of Korean acting sometimes, like mm. of like people just quickly acting and, uh, but yeah, the, that, but I have some Korean Americans mm. that resent that word sometimes. They're like, yeah, but then Nunchi can be hard. I'm like, how so? And they're like, well, you feel this pressure, mm -hmm. right? And I can, then I see that. I'm like, you know what? Good point. That I can totally see that where we have to act a certain way, or they're gonna say they'll nunchi by you going, oh, she didn't do that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's also part of the culture too. So that that would say, in some sense, some of the Korean Americans feel that pressure, and you might have that in Korea too. Go people mm -hmm. going, they're looking at me. I got to do this, and that's also part of that culture too, mm -hmm. right? I use it for good. I use it to do my job mm -hmm. better, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, I can see why it's a burdensome, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. 
Nowadays, yeah. I see many like、um, upper generations calling Gen Z as like oh no nunchi generations. But I think that Gen Zs have have nunchi, but、mm-hmm. they don't really feel like to act upon it.、Mm-hmm. I mean,、mm-hmm. they are like feeling like to act by themselves and act for themselves. Because like when I talk to my friend who I thought that have zero nunchi,、mm-hmm. and she said that oh yeah, so that teacher doesn't really like me. And so what? Yes,、mm. and she was going like that. And if I were in her shoes, I would act differently, like、mm. whole differently. And nowadays, that type of person is getting、uh, more and more avail avail no, like more and more like common. Yeah, yeah, yeah common, more common.、Yes. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so they're just it, it's the generation. Yeah, they're becoming much more. I see it as that people can see it as twofold. Oh, they're they're they have no nunchi. They're not listening. But then the other part is well. They have some boundaries,、mm. unlike my generation, where we're all like, "Okay, let me do this."、So mm. There's a, it's a little more stress where they're like, "You know what? I'm not going to do that. I know that's what you want. Does that make sense?" Yeah. And I had that rebelliousness in me growing up too, going, "I'm not going to do that." In fact, I got in huge trouble when everybody in a family reunion. I'll never forget. I did embarrass my parents, so I did the very least Korean thing. But everybody was eating kare、mm. at a family reunion on the beach in the East Coast.、Mm. I didn't want kare,、mm. and I remember nunchi was. They're like, "Sit down." How many is eating kare? And I just went, huh? And I just had a moment where I just flipped out, going, "Well, I'm not eating kare." And then I, it was a bad moment for my parents. And I heard later on that my mom was scolded by my、Aww. grandmother, my way how many, in front of her siblings at this family reunion. That's terrible.、Mm. But that in that moment, I said, "All right, I'll use my nunchi." That was just my decision, going, "I know that's what they wanted me to do, but I didn't want kare."、Mm. <laughs> and so that's part of why I can relate with some of the younger folks, going, "You know what? I don't want to do this, so why should I?" That's not bad. It's just、mm. the generation speaking up more, right? Yeah. I did it on early as the '80s, and and I got in trouble, but it was different back then. Yeah. yeah. Now we have Jugija.、Mm, yeah. Jugija is, is a, Jugija. a reported Jew. I'm not sure what your take on this reported Jew. So she's a reporter. Her family name is Jew. So、oh. Jugija from、oh. Saturday Night Live, Korean、ah. version, and she's just like a, a young. Woman reporter who's just got no nunchi, who just like she's like, no, I don't know what you're doing, and oh, chincha, she, she、yeah. plays it out like that, and I was oh, it's a、sure. pretend, yeah, yeah. Oh, was, okay, she's an actor.、Uh, <laughs> it's the、this. um, it's dong to the good to the rami in Uyangu. She's the actor of it. Oh, really? Is best she's good. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. She's the actor,、oh, and、um, I think she's also in Naya Joshi, isn't she? Anyway, is she real or is she like old people gaslighting youth into Gucci? Mm. Oh, Jugija behavior.、Um, Jugija.、Oh. I would say like half true and half false、oh. because like、mm. yeah, like some younger generations make fun of baby boomers like just like that they、mm. exaggerate some characteristics.、Mm-hmm. But like for Jugija, the point that we focused on as、mm. a Gen Z was her accents, not、mm. her like attitudes.、Mm. But like some of her attitudes that are shown on SNL is partially true, I'd say, because like. She can guess what nunchi skill she has to use at the moment, but she does not really feel like to do.、Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.、So、she doesn't. And there's another like、mm. fellow character who uses like AirPod during working time,、mm-hmm. and like another like older worker just roundaboutly scold her about、mm. like using AirPod during work time,、mm-hmm. but she really do not feel like to like listen to them, even、mm. though she has nunchi. Um, What's the accents thing? You said you focus more on Jugi Jazz accent. Yeah, like accent? she has like yeah, nervous or light kind of thing, like not very suitable for like journalist. Ah,、mm. oh. not very like low voice. Her、um, voice is like shivering a little bit and、mm-hmm. do not really sound professional in intended way. She's、yeah. a like great actor. But as a character, right? Oh, so, yeah. I gotta see this. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It, it's funny because there is a voice you're meant to use in Korean as well, isn't there? Yeah. I think when you talk to people, it's ah, and yeah, it's almost sing song. You、know. have to follow these intonations. You hear it in the、uh, retail circuit. Is oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like、uh, re- uh, people who do customer service. Yeah. I crack up though. Yeah. Like I'm like, are they trained to do that? Like, are you trained to do that? Yeah, maybe. Like some of my friend,、mm-hmm. one of my friend. Used to work at Olive Young, which is a drugstore.、Yes. They、yeah. do it so well. Yeah, like if I were to like <laughs> greet you guys,、uh-huh. then I would say 안녕하세요, like plainly.、Yeah. But、yeah. they would do like 안녕하세요, yes, Olive Young, Italy. They would like yeah, yeah very like. And and my husband, and I crack up. We like it, but then we're like, 
they got to be trained to do that yeah. because yeah. it's everybody. But and and I, I'll be honest with you, they talk so fast in Olive Young. I'm like, ne? <laughs> I seriously they go, do. They I'm do. Like, <laughs> okay, let let me switch to English. Yeah, they do speak really fast, but yeah. it's very sing songy. Mm. In any real retail, even in the malls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's all there. So I think that's training. Mm. It must be training. You were talking about like your warehouse money, and it put me onto this idea that in Korea, and I'm not sure if it's still true, but I, I read about it in books. And I, I spoke to Park Ji Hyun, who's originally from North Korea, and I asked mm-hmm. her about it, and she was like, "Yeah, that's what we say." Kunaboji, Jagunaboji, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. my big father and my little I father, because Aboji is just like, Jagen-samshun. yeah, yeah, yep. but, like. In the West, you have one father, you yeah. have one mother, mm. but here you're talking about your kunaboji, yeah. your big father, and your taganaboji, right. your little father. But they're like your uncles, technically. Yeah. 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 Is is that a thing, or is that something I'm just reading in like literature? <laughs> um, I would say it's not like second or third father to me. Like right, right, right. it's just about like um, the way of calling them. Mm. I just feel the same as like aunties or like. Mm. Kunaboji or imo just feel similar, but like aunt, uncle, yeah. yeah. But like when there's family members that are like similar age to your parents, they say like, "Oh, regard me as your another parent." Like I feel you as a, like a daughter or something mm. like that. We mm. do have that. Oh, yeah. so you call them what then? What do you call them? Just, just as I supposed to, like as imo or oh, something imo, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my kids, my kids. Sorry, my um. My niece and nephew call me emo. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like, so it's interesting how in some certain sense, I kept a lot of the tradition. Like, all my sons call their their older sister, who's the oldest, Nuna. Mm. And I, in fact, one time on a text, the youngest son said to my daughter, Melody, which is her name, and she goes, Nuna. And I cracked out. Like, <laughs> I was like, that's so funny. I guess I guess I taught them well. But, you know, because he was just like, Melody, you shouldn't say that. And she was like, you mean Nuna? And I did that with all my kids. So they and they grew up saying Hyunga. They did all that. Now the boys say more their names mm-hmm. to each other, but they still call their oldest sister mm-hmm. Nuna. Mm-hmm. And so I did grow up with Imo and Kunapa, and I think I said Chagun Samchun. Yeah, I did that to distinguish them. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I was taught that way. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mm-hmm. said to my daughter, um, this is a couple of months ago, Ellie Elizabeth Ellie, your your friend is coming around tomorrow, and she looked at me without batting an eyelid. She was seven years old, and she said. Daddy, she's not my friend. She's my only. Oh, I interesting! Went, wow, and she did that. She was translating all this, but she did that in English. She says she's not my friend. She's my only. This is so our only. Oh. From a, a psychological perspective, or from mm-hmm. from your work, does it matter if we have a solid sense of self, or if we're always playing different roles? If we're always an emo and then a dongseng and then an only, because in other cultures we're just David. Yeah. We're just genie. And that's a static identity mm-hmm. that sort of goes across all but our But don't they sometimes call you Uncle David or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, but, that I agree with you. Yeah. But here it's a, a lot more fluid, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also much more ageist. Yeah. Like, agree. right? Yeah. Um, so the current answer is like, I do think it can be tough in a collective society. Like, you're known as uh, Egyoma. Mm-hmm. Or one time, it's uh, like my, my mom would call my dad Eugene Appa, mm-hmm. right? And I'm Eugene. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's interesting. We don't do that in Americanized culture, right? So I think you do, I think especially as a parent, you could lose some identity. Mm-hmm. I, as now being 50, I look back fondly, uh-huh. but I very much disliked it growing up when I'm like, why do I got to call you Unni? Mm-hmm. That's just me being a bitter, rebellious brat. I say that because I went, I just didn't understand the honorific respectness because I grew up so Americanized where I was like, we call each other Jeannie and Joan and Barbara. Mm -hmm. And yes, they're like one year older than me, but we still say Barbara, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I have changed that. I don't expect, I don't actually say call me Annie, not at all, but Mm -hmm. it does feel nice when they do. It feels actually closer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but growing up, I felt distant Mm -hmm. when people said, I'm your Annie. And I went, (laughs) you you should see my, I can still imagine my look going, no, you're not. You're just Barbara. But you know what? I just didn't understand it because I didn't grow up in the culture. Now that I know so much more about it and just appreciated it, this comes with age. <laughs> um, it's very much appreciated. But I would I would say, yes, I still hear friends of friends saying, oh, David Appa, 
you know, Jeannie Umma. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, you can't say their name or you can't. But that's the way they, I guess I've learned to accept it. Yeah. But yeah, you lose some of your identity, especially as a parent, mm-hmm. right? You're not, mm-hmm. you're now somebody's mom. Yes. Or somebody's aunt mm-hmm. or somebody's harmony. I think that's a little hard. Now, outside Korean culture, people might not accept that. But psychologically wise, I could see, yeah, you don't have your own sense of self. Mm-hmm. But that is not part of the Korean culture, too. It's like the collective. That's not good or bad. I'm, I'm, I want to be clear about that. But sometimes I think it can be hard on the person yeah. when they don't have, hey, I'm Jeannie Chang. I'm technically Jeannie Bay Chang, right? And so um, I think that's why sometimes there's so, so much more stress in a society like Korea because they can't think about themselves. Sometimes mm. they're like, but my mom mm. wanted me to do this, mm. right? Or it's it's about my sister, that's that's where I go, but that's where you'll never see me insult my own culture. I'll just be like, you know what? But is there a way where you can also understand you want to pursue your passion? Mm-hmm. But then tell your parents, I understand you want me to be a doctor, but I want to be this, mm-hmm. right? So that's my job, trying to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, like when I was in kindergarten, many teachers would tell us that, oh, you should act like Onni because like mm-hmm. you are like, even if it's like one age gap, you should act more mature as Anni. And honestly, still now, like I feel different characteristic when I'm called Anni or Yun Soya as a, like from Anni. Like mm-hmm. I feel different characteristic. Um, when I'm with Anni's, the older sisters, I feel like I would baby talk to them. And if I'm with oh. like younger sisters, mm-hmm. I feel like I should like take care of them mm-hmm. or like I'm feeling more mature around them. I should help them. And yeah, and many of my friends would tell that too because I'm I'm in my second year, so we are experiencing like new freshmen coming mm. to school. Mm. So this is very new to us. And my friends would say, "Oh my God, they're calling me Onni. That's so awkward. And I should be more mature than this. I feel mm. more more responsibility." Yeah. So it's That's not like being too, yourself. Though. It's not like being yourself though. Mm. It's like being Yunso on then Onni. There's yeah. two different. And it sounds like you switch roles when yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, Anni, like, right? Yeah. Or then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm your Anni. Oh, let me try to jump. Mm, yeah, exactly. that, that's, that's hard. But I know that's very much part of the culture. And mm. so it's like, it's like what you, it's like, it's hard to comment. You mm. just go, but that's, that's cultural. Mm. And I can see that. And yes, when they, these, I was working with these folks and I, they called me Anni. I could have been like their Amma, but they said Anni. I did immediately change too. Mm. I felt so close. I go, I won them over. They called me Anni and not like Sung Sing Nim or something. But I'm just getting to the point that I think it could be a term of affection. But mm-hmm. there's the flip side, though. Yeah, there's a little more pressure. You're mm-hmm. like the young. And, but they're meaning out of affection, I feel yeah, like. Sure. Oh, I feel close to you, Anni. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see it now. But if you told me 20 years ago, I'd be like, what? <laughs> I thought you said something really nice, though, which is that I, I think I knew internally but didn't quite realize until you said it that sometimes – Although the title of Hyong or Nuna we might, feels more distant than somebody's name, that actually sometimes in Korean culture it feels much closer. I'm thinking of now Squid Game and mm-hmm. Gukan Digop, Extreme Job, where for the first time they look at someone and go Hyong. And that's a far deeper relationship than just say Cholsu right. and Eugene or right. something like or that. Like but when that title, or... uh, when that title comes in, because then it implies those reciprocal relationships, and that they're sort of bound together. And yeah, I, I think yeah. there's something in there that we we immediately miss if we just look at the language and don't see the relationships going on beneath that. Yeah, because you know, in K drama, because of course I follow every K drama, uh, even interviews with the with the actors. I also like following their interviews and what they're saying about their roles. Mm. I love in the interviews when they go, "Oh, well, Oppa did this, mm. and mm. Anni did this, or Nuna." I, I love hearing that. You mm. don't hear their names. You, will, I think, when they're tongue up or something, I heard them say, "You know, Po Young Shi." I have heard that. Yeah. yeah. But generally, it's so cool to hear Hyung Oppa Nuna and. Mm. That's great. That's a part of the Korean culture that stands out. That yeah. sounds a, like a formal family. interview. Yeah. Mm, yeah, and they're and they're literally fellow actors, though. Mm. But then you can see the closeness because they work together. Yeah. But I love seeing that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Saying somebody's name is fighting talk. I do it to my sister-in-law sometimes, yeah. who's four or five years older than me, which is not a big age gap when you're in your forties. Right. But if I speak, if all of a sudden I say, "Oh, Masumi the Unyang," she'll just <laughs> look at me. She'll look at me as like, "You're not allowed to say my name." God damn it! That you say Choi so funny. No matter how close we are, like this is ten years of eating and drinking and everything. She wants you to say Choi Hyung, which so- is 
the, the relationship. And Interesting. I, I, I call my brother-in-law Hyung, oh, Hyung Im. Yeah. If you say their name, it's wow. And so what we do as a way to get around it, yeah. I say, Edward, what's uncle's name? And he'll go, Ishi Beck. <laughs> <laughs> what's auntie's name? Kim and Young. And they're, they're just going like, oh my God, stop saying <laughs> yeah, my name. Yeah. Because saying somebody's name is very revealing it is it, the it's honorifics of, like foreigners have said to me they love the honorifics yeah they yeah. love hearing yeah. it and yeah. and i like hearing them tell me that because i struggled with it growing up again mm-hmm. it, it's me being a disrespectful like why do i gotta call you that but when they said there's a um what's the k-drama uh, marry my husband so the most the latest k-drama Park min young's character calls her husband that she ends up marrying uh, they address each other like, you know, chu mm. hyuk right? Mm. I found that a little formal instead of saying, you know, chu hyuk or like, you know. Mm-hmm. They loved it, though. They go, I love the honorifics in that marriage. And I'm like, really? And I'm like, okay. But it's just, again, an outlook. But mm-hmm. Americans will tell you they think it sounds so beautiful mm. oh. and like – uh, what else did they say? It's, it's a development from Gypsaram or something yeah, like something that. Like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But you hear old people well, you say. Do hear, oh, yeah, you hear chip, chip. In fact, that's what my, my husband did that for fun, introduced me that way to some, somebody, and he could chip Saram. And I went, okay, which is kind of true. But um, but then Dr. Slump, they address each other as uh, Tongap. Mm. So they're like, you know, Shinea or whatever her name mm. is, uh, uh, Hanula. And I, I, I like that, though, too. And I, it sounds so cutesy and intimate because they're the same age. Mm. And so... Like I said, I just love hearing from the foreigners who appreciate the honorific. And so much they actually go, oh, my gosh. Because I do tours with them. They're like, how do we address people? I go, well, nobody expects you to speak Korean. <laughs> but if you want to, then always just go on the mm. side of honorifics. Always. Yeah. You know, just do that, you know. Well, like some of Korean couples. No, many of Korean couples call each other oppa or nuna. They do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Or chagi. So, I heard chagi a couple times. I'm like, oh, yeah. you say chagi? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, kind of cute. But I do hear yeah. oppa, oppa, and, yeah. and, and um. No, we don't do that. I don't do that with my husband, even though he's oppa. But I did that as a joke, and he's like, "That's chinguro, stop." And I'm like, "Okay, you're right. That's not our per- that's not our relationship." But maybe if we were living here, mm. then it, it would be that, right? But yeah, a lot of my friends say oppa, mm. and I'm like, "Really? It's cute, but it's a little bit yeah. I'm, mm. I'm getting used to that, right?" Mm. I've heard that girls, some girls these days, rather than call an elder guy oppa, they'll call them young. That's friend friend zoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, say it, it again. W- what? So a girl is meant to call an older guy oppa. Uh-huh. If they're just friends or something, they have that relationship. But instead of saying oppa, they'll use hyung. Because like it's like guy to guy, kind of like we're pals. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So they're breaking okay. the gender laws or they're yeah, breaking the language be, okay. laws. Okay. Now, how like, is that being accepted by older family or like I don't know? I'm just curious. So yeah, like I don't really have called older brother as a hyung, but. I just jokingly call my male friend as a hyung mm. because like that's that's like the joke. Like, yeah. That's like, like oh, calling yeah. calling someone as a bro. It's yeah. just in English. Yeah. 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 Bro. Yeah. Actually they say bro. It's bruh. just like guys, it's guys has become sort of non gendered now, I think. Yeah. And bro has become non gendered. It's yeah. kind of like that. Mm, it's Sh- trend. Shall we maybe talk about Doctor Slump? Sure, sure. Because so I drank so much water I have to go to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> we take a minute? Yeah, let's take a minute. Take you a might minute. have to edit this out. No. Okay. Yeah. I'm just telling you now. Check that out. He loves it. I asked him just yeah. as a joke. I was like, do you like drivers? Like, oh, buddy pile. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> was... Wait, you, you you just, you known him for a while though, right? I guess I, you just discovered him. I've only him. known him for maybe four or five months. But he's a lovely guy. Yeah. Um, Perfect. I, feel I, relieved I, now. He doesn't watch sports, but he watches dramas. And this is, do. this is really interesting. My brother-in-law, who is, I hope I don't get in trouble for this. My brother-in-law, who is a, Stand up, Lieutenant Colonel in the Korean military. There's not an ounce of fat on this guy. He's a masculine man. He's like this. He watches dramas all the time. Yeah, of course I do. That was a hospital playlist. Yeah. He's all on that. This 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 guy here, he's watching dramas. I think most Koreans do yeah. um, because it's part of the culture. Yeah. And I do find that when I was doing research for my book, a lot of them were nonchalant. Like, yeah, I watch dramas, no big deal. I'm like... Mm. Okay, maybe that you you it's part of your culture, so it's not like you appreciate it. Where at Wegugin, mm-hmm. mm. they I mean they're all jealous I'm here. Like that's I mean I've never been in a position where people are like you're going to Korea, like uh, like well in advance because I do Korean tours. Well in advance of your tours, you're so lucky. Wow, and I'm like. That's kind of neat. Mm. Um, but be, And they're like, is, is it really true that they do this? Like, they're always wondering how realistic some of the K-dramas are. I'm like, well, yes, yeah, some of the drama, the scenarios are not real. But, yeah, the cherry blossoms coming down, I heard it's so real. I mean, because I haven't been here yet with the cherry blossoms. But a lot of things I've seen, I've seen couples 
twinning. Yeah. Mm. I crack up. What's well, twinning? A couple look. Couple, I mean. Same clothes. <laughs> but not only same clothes. I'm talking cashmere sweater like this. Yeah, yeah head to toe. Uh, and I, and I don't want to be rude and take a picture, but I was like, I, I, I wish I could take it. Like, yeah. I wish I could go like this and show America because <laughs> um, you would think America's much more affectionate, but mm-hmm. Koreans have such affection and it cracks me up. And then I loved seeing, and actually everybody noticed on my tour, on the, on the Namsan cable car ride, you go up the Namsan Tower. We, my whole tour group walked in, and I think there are a bunch of college kids, college boys. I saw two of the boys that were like, oh, there's a big group coming in. I saw one of the boys grab the other boy close to him, like a hug. Mm. You do not see that in the U.S. I thought it was so cute because he was saying, hey, come closer, and he hold, held him. Mm-hmm. I just wish I could take a picture of that. Those are the things you can't <laughs> capture, but you see that in Korea. Yeah. Mm. So I'm digressing, but that affection is cute what what would your husband say if you tried doing the couple look with him <laughs> he actually suggested it for it's, fun going it would be good you know, this is what he said it would be good Insta content it. yeah he said good content <laughs> i went but i go well, but we wouldn't look as cool because we we would look like we're trying too hard and these couples look kind of natural doing it like, yeah like cashmere sweaters to the like the husband wearing the yeah. same yeah. cashmere sweater it's that's neat like mm. you know and so that's the affection part of korean dra- uh, not korean drama sorry korean culture mm. that i do emphasize going hey folks it is kind of real they're kind of cheesy in real life and they're cheesy in the k drama and maybe you don't see the men cry as much but i go but korean k i mean sorry koreans are pretty emotional mm. they just they express it differently because i find actually koreans can be very emotional hence why they exaggerate on the drama because i think they're trying to get that out you know so, yeah, there is this idea and I, I'm not sure how far we go into this, but the, the mind, I, I've done it in class. I'll ask all my students uh, to point to the door. They all point to the door, point to the clock. They all point to the clock. And then I say, point to your mind. And all the Western students point here and all the Koreans point to their chest. And then they go, <laughs> oh, oh, and then they quickly point here <laughs> that the Malm, that the center, because the idea that we're a rational decision maker, this comes from Descartes. It comes from I think, therefore, I am. The whole essence of my being is located behind here. Mm-hmm. But for Koreans, sometimes. So the, they the point the like this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. This Wait, is the mom. Well, this is mom. But, but you're saying mind? Or... Point to your mind. They point yeah. here. Really? So they're remote. They're driven by emotion. You're not they meant totally to be are, logical. yeah. But you, mm-hmm. if you had asked me this pre my psychology degree or even pre genie, you know, being mature, just understanding and studying identity, I would have said, Koreans are so not emotional mm. because you don't see it growing up. My, my dad never said, I, I think I can count the times my mother said, I loved you. I love you. Mm. She clearly loves me. She, to this day, she's still like, did you eat? And, or like, are, it's, it's cold in Korea. And I'm like, yes, I'm I know. She said, wear a jacket. I'm like, I am wearing it. You know, you get frustrated. That's their way of love. So very yeah. affectionate that way. But they don't yeah. express verbally saying, mm-hmm. I love you. But I see them do it with my kids. So my whole point is I grew up thinking... They're so not emotional, but Koreans just express it differently, mm. and they actually are very emotional. Um, in some sense, that's why I think it's hard for Koreans to – they, like, also hold it in for the sake of, like, their family. Don't show them I'm suffering. You know, it's very – that's why, in some sense, Korean culture, Korean society can be so stressful mm. because they suppress so much – for the sake of the good of the others, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I get it. That's very noble. And yes, I, I know you don't want to be a burden, but let's talk about your mental health because I think there's a way to express that you're stressed, mm-hmm. but just see it as they also need to know this because they feel your stress. You know, a family member will feel your stress even though you don't say anything. Mm-hmm. That can be actually very stressful. There's that YouTube video from Mark Manson. Uh, Korea is the most depressed yeah. country in the world. Yeah, yeah, I have stuff to say about that, but I, I guess I could refrain. We we spoke to uh, Sonalan Yoramba, the, yeah. the, the psychologist on here. I saw. Uh, I didn't see the whole interview, but yeah, I yeah, saw. Some I of... thought the the title was clickbait nonsense, but the the video itself was good, and I played it in class already to mm-hmm. about forty Koreans, and I'm like, "What do you think of yeah, this?" Yeah, tell me what they what they. Think. And load of them, half of the class went, "That's absolutely right," and half of the class went. I'm not depressed. I'm okay. And so it's mm-hmm. really interesting mm-hmm. that there are these different reactions from Koreans. Like there's no one authentic Korean voice on this. That half of them went this way, half yeah. of them went the other. So what this do you is, think? Um, you might not have, seen, have you seen it? Um, yeah, shortly. Okay. And I think that like not all of the Koreans are depressed, but some of Koreans began to think that we are depressed because we are hard to... Koreans be depressed. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, every people have their depressive thoughts or depressive feelings. 
like for example, if I got like F on my test, I would be depressive yeah. for a you moment. Would never get an F on your <laughs> test. <laughs> but yeah, if you did bad on your test, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a bad yeah. moment for a yeah. student. Sure. Yeah, and if I just fight with my friend, that would be depressive. But like for Korea, some people think that oh yeah, so Korean people are always hardworking. They're overworking and they lack of sleep. They're like pressure for education. Yeah, we do, but. Every other country has their struggles, and mm-hmm. they could feel depressive. But for Korea, we have like pali pali culture, yes. so that may that may be like the reason why it feels exaggerated mm. for some reason. Yeah, I totally thought I'm going to say a totally clickbait title, mm. um, and I heard it from a Korean national told me to watch it, um, who's not in my field but just a professional. And I went okay, mm. um, and so I guess I'm not going to comment too much, but completely 100 percent disagree. Korea is not. A depressed country, mm. but that makes for good content because <laughs> it does. That, this is an idea. And you said that people are telling you you're depressed, and I think if you're going to put something out about Korea is depressed and Korea is sad and suicide, people will lap that up. Of I course. think there's a desire, and, and for there it is a true. Influence. We have the highest. This is the highest suicide rate here. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean all that is true, and I talk about it, and I, I went verbally on talked about Lee Sung Yoon's suicide. I was very upset. All of that is legit, but I hope you've never heard me insult the culture i say i say you know what i wish it was less stressful if they, they're not talking about things but overall there's no way korea is the most depressed country in the world it is booming mm-hmm. even amidst of there's always economic stress mm-hmm. but it's booming the, the koreans are hard working but they also don't understand it's almost like they don't know emotions 101 so mm-hmm. if someone tells you you're depressed they'll believe that mm-hmm. so i got really annoyed with the video actually mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's just my two cents no it's you good. know in my defense maybe i'll comment on it but i, I just haven't yet because i'm like Ugh. I'm not going to, but I, I heard about it and I had to watch it two or three times. Very clickbaity, but then he ends at the very end. He ended it well. Yeah. But I was like, well, I mean, no. I mean, there's more depressive countries out there. They're actually suffering in poverty and depressive. Yeah. Korea's thriving and actually at the height of its game at this point. Mm. So there's a difference. It's just that if you tell a Korean this, mm-hmm. they'll believe it. And they'll, and so I saw all the Korean comments and I was mm. like, oh, my goodness, they do think they're different. Stressed. Yeah, and they're stressed. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stress here. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, but there's also a lot of joy and a lot of chung that that Westerners want so badly to live here. Mm. That is not a depressed country. Mm-hmm. That's all I want to say. Mm. And if you produce amazing content and you have these writers and and all the stuff that are on the cutting edge of things, it's not a depressed country. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there is a lot of joy here. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of laughter. Yeah, and there's also a lot of hardships. Yeah, yeah all yeah. of that exists, you know, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. complex. Let's go through Doctor these Song. three things. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, the first I want to start with Lee Song Yoon's suicide, which you just mm. mentioned, uh, or death, as you mentioned. Sorry, mm-hmm. my language might be different. Mm-hmm. And then whether Hallyu is still big, mm-hmm. and then maybe we'll get on to Dr. Slump. We'll mm-hmm. try to go through mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Lee Song Yoon, the, the star of Parasite, mm-hmm. um, the star my of Mr. My Mister. <laughs> Well respected and famed actor was involved in stories that just kept coming out in the press day yeah. after day. The same with you, I in actually, just yeah. these repeated yeah. Yeah. drug stories. the The story about him that was out there was that um, marijuana and prostitutes, mm-hmm. marijuana and a miss uh, and, and a brothel. Uh, mm-hmm. That was the story, and he, I'm not sure how you would word it, but mm-hmm. he decided to take his own life. Yeah. Um, Died of suicide. Yeah. I had a look at your video, Mm -hmm. uh, which was titled We Should Not Blame. Mm -hmm. I I was on Channel 4 in the UK. I was Mm -hmm. on Spanish national uh, radio and I was in Danish radio as well. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I was thinking... He had kids. What a selfish guy. Mm -hmm. I I know, so I'm going to go with a controversial take here. But me and my mates were going, no, you don't do that. You don't you don't take your own life just to get away from something mm-hmm. like that. If you're being investigated, you have to front up. You have to say, Jesus Christ, I did something wrong. Yeah. Because otherwise you're passing trauma onto your kids. Imagine what they're going to yeah. feel. I mean, that is what's left, and every, right? Yeah, and everyone was saying, no, you can't say that. You have to be really nice about him. I yeah. was torn, and perhaps I wasn't as honest as I should have been because I was trying to be respectful, and I, yeah. and I wasn't quite sure how to do it. Yeah. But on a personal level and without knowing what was going on, I felt really kind of like, wow, what about your children, man? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in, so from a parent point of view, that is actually where people tend to go, that those poor kids, true, yeah. they're going to live a life of that. 
Yeah. So that's the honest truth. And there's going to be trauma that they're going to have to navigate. I can't even begin to imagine. And in, in a country like Korea, that's still a little bit behind addressing mental health and providing the therapeutic services. Yes. However, like just understanding, again, I don't live in Korean society, but understanding the stress of Korean culture and the scrutiny and the cancel culture and also thinking the exact opposite where he was thinking of his family and that he was going to bring more shame than not being alive. I'm I'm not even, I can't even begin to get into his head. I'm just, this is what my assessment is, is that that was what he thought was the most noble choice. Very Korean thinking of like, I'm bringing shame. This is like terrible. Um, Yes, I think he did wrong. And you know, uh, there's there's a lot out there, right, that he obviously made some choices that maybe were not wise. But then also there was that it was such scrutiny in the media. This is where I think mm-hmm. Korean society could do better. They kind of leave you per- the person alone. They're like, oh, let's not talk about it. So he was probably very isolated in the, his most time of need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is actually the most worst thing possible. Now, it's also understandable because it's Korean culture. So we tend to do that. Where, I mean, we tend to be like, oh, let's not ask him about it. Let's not do that. Even though we want to, and we could be his friend. I'm sure there were, he had tons of friends. We saw his funeral. I mean, we saw all these people crying, these actors bawling their eyes out. But I believe that's part of the culture of like, don't ask questions, leave it alone, put your head down. Blah, blah. And that is, um, I, this is where the psych- psychological thought would be. The, the cl- client or the patient needs actually utmost care. It could be done by just one person going, are you okay? You know, you know the Korean term of like, Kenchana? Mm. I don't know if someone asked that. Mm. And I also believe probably, honestly, during that time, because he made some mistakes, his wife was upset, right? So the Korean thing to do is withdraw. I'm assuming that's what happened. Or she didn't talk to him or they just went, or he was, she was angry, right? Un- everything's understandable, but you just feel sad thinking the isolation and you're not thinking in your right mind. I don't think it was so much like, you know, I uh, let me not own up to my mistake. They're not thinking that. They're thinking, mm-hmm. I did something terrible. It's so wrong. Oh my gosh, so much shame I'm bringing. I don't deserve to live. Is that level? Mm-hmm. But if someone had said, you do deserve to live. Just let's, let's just get through this. You're such a good actor. You know, I, I just don't think anybody was there. Mm-hmm. That's my assessment. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, Based you, on the culture, you, you give a lot of perspectives that perhaps I wasn't um, cognizant of. From a cultural perspective, especially somebody like you that does have a knowledge of both, is this cultural exceptionalism or is there some validity to say that the West has more of a redemption arc? It has more of this kind of you can go through guilt, but you can overcome guilt and you can be forgiven and and Christ the Redeemer. And we have these stories where Asian culture, you mentioned the word shame quite a lot, that shame is something that you cannot confess you cannot get out of and therefore there is no redemption arc and therefore the only way through it is through the, the taking of thinking. one's life yeah, yeah. Is, is, is how do you understand this concept of shame because shame is everywhere but is it magnified here is there something different in it's very uh, and i say this uh, asian culture not just korean culture is yeah. can be shame and blame oriented because of such confucius values of like being peaceful and harmonious and think about the Korean standards perfect grades right I grew up like that too my parents be like what is this like uh, it's a 99 I mean I'm exaggerating but they'd be like why didn't you get 100 I mean I kid you not and I'd be like oh my god it's an A (laughs) right (laughs) but that's the culture we come from so you make a mistake and you're a celebrity or you're an artist very much looked up like this like a k-pop idol I hate Mm -hmm. that word idol by the way I really just like that word idol because you're already going like this so if you're saying K-pop idol, you're up here. Why are you doing that? When they're humans, and actually, honestly, they're under so much pressure, they're going to make a mistake because <laughs> they're under so much pressure. That's a lot. So I feel like Koreans have such high standards. Again, I'm very cautious of saying good or bad. But there's to this extreme. We cannot be too extreme in anything. And so there has to be that modification of, right, he made a mistake or, well, okay, but let's, let's still have some people there for him. He got canceled, and I've seen this every bit, canceled within – like immediately. And then I'm assuming because Koreans are also shame based, he had so much financial burden that he owed, which is part of like the agency life, mm-hmm. probably contributed to it. So my thing is, I do think I had the Western part of like, not forgiveness, but just a little bit more understanding because it's not so much that high expectation based. Mm-hmm. 
is something to learn from in some, in that sense, you know, because we are human. <laughs> and having at one point, like I said, I'm, I'm re- thinking my own background of like even a 99 or if you got like a 96, they'd be like, where's the four points? That's our culture. Mm-hmm. And so I grew, I tried my best. I still made mistakes with my kids, but I'd be like, oh, that's an A. I'd be like, where's the, why didn't you get 100? No, I mean, you're, I'm thinking that. I just won't say it. <laughs> I hope that society can better that suicide rate score of number one where you isolate somebody because they did make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Sadly so, but um, mistakes happen. You know, and so the U.S. Yeah. is a little bit more forgiving in that sense. Yeah. And there's some horrendous mistakes, but then you see them 10 years later win an Oscar Academy Robert Award. Downey and I Jr. think that's great. Yeah, and, this and he's doing great work. Yeah. You got to give people some second chances. Oh, that's another reason why K dramas showing second chances really resonate with the audience. They want to see that. So mm. then translate it to real life, going, hey, give somebody a second chance. Mm. UIN seems to be on that track. Mm. So, because that's worrisome too. And I'm going to be honest, when Lee sung Kyun's news broke out, that was my fear. Mm. Because he's at that age, like my, he's, I think, just one year younger than me, where he thought that way. Mm. It's much more shame based, where UIN is a little younger, mm. so they think a little differently. Mm. That's just my thought. So when I saw the news break, I remember I was, I was on vacation with my family, and I just said it out loud, going, they said, you Lee sung Kyun found dead. That was the first headline, but you know, my first thought was suicide. That's just sad that mm. I thought that, mm. though. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, that was sad, so I had to speak up on it. No, no. Yeah, I lots think... of folks were very devastated. Yeah. You you, you mentioned the word idol, and uh, G.K. Chesterton said that when people don't believe in God, they don't believe in nothing. They believe in anything. Mm-hmm. And so as religion becomes less part of modern life, it, people still need to believe in something. Mm. It, there, there's part of humans that I think that are, are bound to believe. We want something. something. Yeah. yeah. And so if the church is not there or the temple's not there or the religious institutions that once used to play such a... Uh, a pivotal role in people's lives is absent, they will look for other things in which to believe. And those other things might be the idols, the K-pop stars, yeah. the, the Greta Thunbergs, the the, ide- yeah. the ideologies, whatever it might be. But that belief doesn't suddenly go away. No, it just gets channeled it differently. But, you know, in the field of mental health, language matters. So how you yeah. label somebody or how you say something can critically change a conversation. So whenever I hear K-pop idol, like I've – like refra- like reframed and going, I mean, K-pop artist, just because there is so much pressure already, they are seen as idols. That is a little dangerous. And you saw that with the Espa story recently. Karina. Karina. And I went, poor Karina. But then I also, because I like asking <laughs> MZ questions to Koreans, they were like, oh, yeah, no, that's we have some empathy for that. That's like, that's too bad that she felt like she had to apologize. But I go, that's also cultural. So they understand that in that same breath. But there's a danger there, too. I mean, I'm like, oh, good God. You know, I'm just thinking, isn't that sad? That's your thought. Let, let me go at this because I wrote a column on this. Oh, did you? Karina's apology. Oh, OK, you, OK. You soon, which is Karina demonstrated that she was an idol by apologizing. Mm. And an idol is not better or worse than an artist. An idol is just different. An mm. idol is somebody that goes through a training process and works for a company. Mm. And an idol has a duty to please their fans. Now, okay. if Karina, whose real name I've suddenly forgotten, yeah, was a young woman. A young woman is allowed to date, and a young yes. woman is allowed to do these things. Yeah. But that's not the... We're talking about Karina the Idol. Now, the Karina the Idol has this unwritten contract with the fans, which is, I'm going to work for you. You're going to give me all this success, all this fame, all this love, 16 million Insta viewers, and I'm going to work for you. Mm. That's what an idol is. An artist mm. would have said, yeah, I'm in love with someone. Yeah, I don't care what you think. An artist would have done what Taylor mm. would Taylor Swift have apologized. Would, right. would Justin Bieber? Mm. No, because Probably these not, are right. artists, and what happens is Good point. the music company needs the artist. The company wants to have Taylor Swift. They want to have Post Malone. They want to have Doja Cat. They want to have uh, Justin, Justin Bieber. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we go in the same way because they can do something that nobody else can. Mm. They have this certain je ne sais quoi. They have this special magic dust. Now, Karina needs SM Entertainment. Yeah. Because without SM Entertainment, is Karina go off and going to write a, a hit album? Is she going to be able to do it by herself? Maybe some art, some people, idols, do elevate themselves to the sure. status of artists. Yeah. But uh, an idol is different from an artist. I see, I see your point. I'm not throwing shade on them. No, no, no. I, different. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, see, I see your point. But, mm. th- but that would be me going, can we find a balance? Or can there be a way to, if we keep that term, goodness gracious, though, like... There is some trouble in the K-pop industry that way. So if there is a way to 
if I want Korean society to succeed like 50 years down the road, 100 years down the road with the K-pop industry, mm -hmm. something's got to give, mm -hmm. a little bit of give, it, you know? It so It makes too that's much it. money. It makes too much. Excellent. It doesn't, people, money. capitalism but doesn't I didn't care if it's good for you or not. But I didn't approve of those trucks saying, mm -hmm. what did they say? Um, how dare you love somebody? Oh, yeah. I was like, what the heck? I mean, so yeah, you feel sorry for what? She's like 23. I think she's my daughter's age. You yeah. just feel sorry for her. But then I also, in the same breath, understood her apology and why she did it. Does that make sense? So, because mm -hmm. global fans were obsessed, like so upset, going, "How dare she apologize?" And I, well, you know what? That's that's cultural, and that's also part of what's expected. So that. But then, how do we? So there's some change needed, and I think they're sh they're trying to figure that out and mm -hmm. provide more, for instance, mental health treatment or just sessions for K-pop artists. I'm still going to say that yeah. K-pop artists. Yeah. But um, yeah, something's got to give for it to survive. Or we're going to have some of, some of their big news. And there was a sliding doors moment. Karina could have said, no, no. Yeah. You, you guys deal with it. But she didn't. Yeah. And it's going to take somebody to say, listen, guys. When Sodigy was releasing Edip, his second album, he had long red dreadlocks and ripped jeans. And they mm -hmm. said to him, you're not going on television like that. And Sodigy said, all right, I won't go on television. I won't die. Really? Sotiji. Oh, I yeah, love Sotiji. Yeah, I didn't know that. His lyrics were, but they wouldn't publish the lyrics for uh -huh. his song because they said he was criticizing the education. Mm. And they said, we can't publish this. And he said, then don't publish it. I'm not changing them. I won't be Tandala. Oh. I won't be a, a, a performing yeah. monkey for you. I didn't know that. I think Karina, and it's not all on her to change the industry. Sure. Like, there's too much for this young woman. But she could have said, why would I apologize for having a boyfriend? Yeah, she yeah. could have said that oh, and right. the industry would have changed because Esper is huge yeah but she didn't, didn't. Mm. she didn't mm. so we have to wait till the next one yeah mm. or 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 learn from this and something still changes going we feel like something within mm. <laughs> like SM Entertainment going we do feel bad for you I don't know we'll just see but imagine the... BTS have never had a girlfriend Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why, in some sense, they're so successful. I mean, there are some reasons to that, right? So I was being sarcastic, oh, okay. yeah. but uh, that's what I mean. I know, yeah, I know. Like, you feel a little bad. They, they're, they're like thirty now, yeah. thirty-two. Gosh, they're in the prime of their. I'm just life. thinking, they yeah. look so good, you know. Everybody's Hence the birth beautiful. rate being low. Okay, I'm, not, I'm just gonna not. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like I'll at, try to at this point, this is an <laughs> unpopular <laughs> opinion in Korea, but I think that idols sh should or can date someone because like that's so, an unpopular opinion though like yeah still? for sure for Even sure now? like 99 percent oh, like, yeah okay um really you know yeah. like so-called idols are like idealized right yeah and other characteristics of so-called idols are like viewed as a very positive like for example let's say luceraphim started certain trends of like dressing or hairstyle mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would be seen as a very good or cool thing and Korea views like dating as a like ideal thing. Like mm. if you are staying single, they ask you, "Oh, why, why, why aren't you finding your boyfriend?" or kind of thing, which is stressing me out. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Did you hope so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that stresses oh. me out. And if that's ideal, and if there's idol, why can't they do ideal things? Mm. That's so. Oh. Like, yeah. But you have an unpopular opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Though I did poll some people. Um, I would say in. The, more in like the K-pop industry employees and they also empathize with Espa but they were a little older than you so I guess but generally I guess the fans would agree with the other part which is mm. they shouldn't be dating but goodness gracious we want drama people to date we want song song oh, yeah, couple yeah, yeah. oh yeah we want Hyunbi, we, it, but it's, it's because it's an idol rather than an actor is that right mm. or not it, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. like some of the delusional K-pop mm. fans, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how you feel now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they can't be. It's a little too much. Yeah. yeah, I know because I've been through that. Yeah. <laughs> like oh. when I was in middle school or something like that. Yeah. But like there are some of the fans that are delusional still nowadays. So yeah. they do not really want their idols to date someone because yeah. they should be like everyone's idol yeah like they should be like public and i thing. don't and i get it because mm. that's like that parasocial relationship yeah by the way also even sometimes when you hear about a k-drama actor dating you get a little bit like oh really he's dating i, I was i forget who it was but i'm like oh but that makes and i'm i'm married mm -hmm. so but i was totally like oh he's dating so i felt a little something mm. so i t i in that sense i can a little bit relate mm -hmm. because it's somebody you really liked and had a crush on and think mm -hmm. was cute maybe it was soju sub because he got married mm. um yeah, I think it was him. But yeah, just uh, but yeah, you're right. Drama actors, they're like, why? Like Dr. Slump, Pakshin is already obviously married, but they're like, why can't they get together? 
like crash landing on you, Son Ye Jin's and Hyun Bin got so much attention because they were so excited. Isn't yeah. Soji Sup with Shimina? Like in, no, no, no. no, no Shimina was with Kim Woo Bin. Oh, that's. Yeah, I I'm know sorry. my couples. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah, they've been together for a long time. Yeah. Is, but Soji Sup's married to, I think, a former news anchor. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hallyu content has mm. boomed. Mm. We've seen it. We know it. We've seen just how around the world, and you can't fake it. Mm-hmm. Now, there used to be this idea, like in 2012 or 2010, that K-pop is really big in France, and it, it wasn't. There was mm. this narrative that was being pushed that, mm. you know, it's really hitting abroad, but it wasn't. There was a lot of fluff to that, and there was a lot of, you know, untruths. For the last couple of years, three, four, five years, it has been so big. And when I tell older people about it, how many international students, how many people are coming here that have not only a loving or a liking for Korea, but a deep knowledge of the K-pop and the dramas, and they're so invested. It, it's You can't fake that. When I tell people that, they're like, uh, really? Because mm, they're so used yeah. to it being uh, blown up and exaggerated yeah. beyond proportion. It has been huge and you can't fake it right is it decreasing slowly as we see trends move on do you notice anything or is it as still as popular as ever it's just changing a little bit hmm. do you get a sense of yeah this i still think it's still as popular as ever i think the what the rabidness or avidness mm. has died down in the sense of it's calmed down but i still think the fan base runs deep mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. It's it went wide, mm. and I think it's still wide and it's kind of like there, like this. But then it went this way, mm. and so you still have a deep depth of fan base. Now they'll say that they've expanded a little bit, going, "Oh, I started watching a J drama, a C drama," but then you, I tend to hear the same comments: "K dramas have the best production quality or the best acting." And of course, I'll be like, "Yeah, no, I'm just kidding." I'll be like, "Oh," because I don't have time to watch the other ones, right? So I'll be like, "You know, I'll take your word for it. I've seen maybe a couple C dramas in my life, but." You hear the production value, which people will emphasize. Some of these, like Mr. Sunshine's like Oscar quality mm. for 24 episodes. Um, I still think the production quality, despite it, the, I heard with changes within the industry, like economic uh, like stressors and stuff that they can't spend all this budget, doesn't matter. The production quality is still very high. So I don't think it's lessened. I think it's deepened. Mm. So you mm. have this deep appreciation, hence me giving these K-drama tours. It's not a plug for it. Just going, if I have people going, I want to go to South Korea because cause I saw this in a drama and people are like, uh, FOMO that I'm here still tells you, I, I'll give you an example of somebody saying to me on the first day of my tour in September, Jeannie, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I'm meant to live here and I'm cracking up going, okay, you're just saying that's just first day of your tour. Let's see how you feel afterwards. Well, guess what? She's moving here this year. African-American, female, I mean, she's bringing her son here. She's making everything. She made it work. I went, you you, you made it work. She's like, no, Jeannie, I meant it. What I said on day one, mm-hmm. I felt like I was meant to live here. You see stories like that, and you know that's what I mean by the depth. So I do believe Hallyu is here to stay. There's a depth. Mm-hmm. You just might not see that avidness, trendiness, but I'm okay with that because you'd rather get the depth of mm-hmm. people staying. Yeah, put. Do you know <laughs> what it was that? attracted Korea to the person. There, there was a destiny. There was a... Yeah. But was she, there something? We, we were walking side by side. And this is an African-American female where I feel like mm-hmm. the African-American community and Korean, Korean community, Korean-American community have a lot in common mm-hmm. when it comes to their history, you know, the resilience, the family ties. They also struggle with talking about mental health too. They'll be like, mm-hmm. go to church. I'm about to sneeze. Okay, maybe it stopped. <laughs> I knew it. Bless you. They'll say, thank you. They'll say things like... Um, there's no such thing. Mental health, you're, you just need to go to church. So that's similar in the Korean-American circuit. So I just thought she was being facetious, like she was just so happy to be there as a K-drama fan. But no, I think she really felt at home. And this is somebody who's actually allergic to seafood. Mm. And I went, you can't eat half the broth. You still you want you still want to live here? But then she's like, yeah. And then and then when I met up with I actually got to meet up with her. She told me her plans to move here, and I was shocked. So I think it was something innate. She felt the connection. Mm. That's the chung which she had to the culture. I believe it. And that, and she clearly made it work. And so mm-hmm. she's moving here. So, I mean, things like that, I hear a lot of these stories. This is why Korean language um, classes went up. Like, I don't know the whole statistics, but I have followers that I went, please don't speak better than me. Please. Because that'll be a shame to me. 
They do, though. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. And they're like, guess what, Gina? I just passed intermediate level three. And I went, oh, my good God. But that just tells you the depth. Mm-hmm. They are investing money. Mm-hmm. They're investing money on my tours, too, to come here. That just tells you the depth mm-hmm. of love. Tell us about a tour. Where do you go? Yeah. Do you go to, like, the Itaewon class here? Yeah. Or, yeah, mm-hmm. okay. yeah, but I, I will. Yeah. We go to, like, the main sites. And people always go to me, say to me, how come my mister's not on there? I go, well, honestly, my mister was, like, pretty much every neighborhood you see. It wasn't, like, these iconic sites, like Goblin. Up the up the steps in the hill where they bring the grandmother down. I know. Down. I was thinking yeah, that, that. I could that, show that. That's yeah. just, it depends on where we can make work. Yeah. But, yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. I will find the most iconic sites, the obvious sites of like Goblin, Tokipi is very mm-hmm. obvious, Mr. Sunshine's Nonsan, uh, which is by the Nonsan Training Center, yeah. those obvious sites, but then also the new K-dramas, Dr. Slump is going to be in there, um, Castaway Divas, but the Busan Sol- Dr. Slump? The Busan Dr. Slump, no, their house, which oh, is in, the, wow. yeah, you know the house? I, I, I actually filmed myself going there, it's a gallery, it's not even looking like the house, but that's where they filmed it, they just yeah. spruced it up, yeah. but I... It's it's when I do these tours, you also have to think what's trending, what's the latest K drama like Woo Young Woo, and mm. the, and then the classics. You have to bring in like um, Nam Sun Tower has every K drama that was filmed there, so it's fun. But yeah. that's why I tell you about the depth because I witness it firsthand from these travelers, mostly eighty percent from the U.S., Canada, Australia, I mean U.K. Now, the depth of their love for this country is what came out of the K dramas. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's real and it's general. I love this idea about uh, not mistaking uh, width for depth. I think that's a very Mm. insightful way because I think we're we're sometimes focused on the width and the spread and and how far it gets. But the depth is there. I I see the same thing when I see some students coming in with topic level six. And I'm like, wow. Uh, Like, I'm still studying They work hard. They put me to shame. Oh, I need to practice my Korean. Let Um, me ask you this about neurodivergency. This is something I've learned from my Mm. international students um, and I'm not sure if my language is right in speaking about neurodivergence but Uh they love the international students love Korea because it's so silent and you can walk around and order a coffee and you don't have any small talk you don't go up to somebody go hi how are you how's your day (laughs) and they can go into a coffee shop they go to a kiosk they press a button they get their coffee (laughs) they go here and they're like I fucking love it I don't have to speak to anyone some people are loquacious they like to interact and talk but a lot of my international students like I love that I can just go around. I don't have to talk to anyone. It's amazing. Yeah, I highly agree with that. Even as a very extroverted Korean American, yeah. I love the subway. <laughs> I'm like, this is nice. No one's talking to me. And, but then when I'm in America, I don't mind people talking to me. You can adjust. Yeah. But that is great about Korean. I mean, I do like the fact that it's efficient, effective. And sometimes one thing, sometimes the body body culture, though, will stress me out because I'll be like at a kiosk going, I mean, I still read a little slow. It's like, yeah, yeah. Kimpa. What? what? And then you're, you're hearing somebody going shuffling. I'm like, go ahead. And then I'm like last in line like 30 minutes later. But that would be the only thing that stresses me out because I'm trying to read faster. But no, it's nice. I could see totally why. And uh, Woo Young Woo and her obviously had the headphones because there is some noise there. But it is. I was there for rush hour coming here. Dead silent because everybody's on their phones headphones and I'm cracking up like squeeze like this going oh good thing no one's talking because nobody wants to talk <laughs> but that's okay that's part of the culture mm-hmm. it's very quiet and efficient and effective you know yeah. mm-hmm. my international students say professor the subway is so quiet <laughs> and my Japanese students say professor the subway is really noisy <laughs> oh really because <laughs> they come from a quiet oh yeah they're place. even more quiet the bus is also quiet too I think mm-hmm. I dropped something and I was like everybody like turned out I was like I'm sorry just, just I'm, dropped something I'm weird I sit there I don't take the subway much but if I do I just like sit there and look and it's fun. Take, it's a... take in what's going on because They're that's all I'm just what I'm used to. Yeah. Mm. All on their we were at Vietnam Airport coming back from a holiday with the kids the other month. There was 250 of us like kind of waiting in this gate to get huh? on the plane. I was the only one with a book. I thought that was kind of weird. And I was reading a oh, Korean book. Everyone's on their phone. Mm. Yeah, mm. I, was, I, was, I was reading a book in Korean and I thought it was an amazing sight that you had all these Koreans on the phone and there was one white guy reading a book in Korean, and I thought, this is a bit weird. It is. Uh, though I was at a cafe reading. today, someone did have a book. Oh, wow. Oh, a wow. Korean student. Yes. She probably was in her 20s, but yeah. she probably worked for grad school, whatever, but yeah. she was on a book. But you're right, most people are on their phones. Yeah. Um, but I will say, it's yeah, it's like, it's oddly comforting when you do come into the subway. I'm like, oh, just it's like, pyeonne. Like, I don't mm. mind the, the <laughs> quietness, and I need, I am out, outgoing, but I don't mind it here. But in the U.S., yeah, you'd want someone to say, hey, what's up? Oh, yeah, you, I like your top. You, to a total stranger? 
Oh, oh, gosh. Yeah, so, uh, in fact, uh, in, in the, if I was wearing this in the U.S., I'd be like, I love your top. I'd be like, thanks. We oh. do that in the U.S. I know you said that to me here because you know me. But no, in the U.S., we'll say random things like that going, oh, by the way, the, it's this way. Mm-hmm. Now, Koreans can help you. If you're lost, I've seen someone going like. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd be like, awkward oh, you, mean. You know, you know? <laughs> okay. That, like that, you know, and I crack <laughs> up going, they know I'm lost. They, they're trying. But that's Korean silent, like mm-hmm. go this way. But that's the nunchi, that's nunchi. too. They'll that's be like, nunchi. oh, you're, you look like you're lost or, yeah. Um, Absolutely. The, yeah. The small talk in Europe, you would be you amazed. It? People just look at you and go, you're right. Bonjour. Nice day. How are you doing? It's raining today, isn't it? And this is a person yeah. you've never met before. Yeah. And they just say something. She's like, what? Wow. Do, if you, do, do you walk up to a random person? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're next to them. You might and be say, waiting in line with them or somebody walks past and <laughs> hi. Oh. Yeah, if you did that in Korea, just be so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Don't do that in Korea. I would yeah. do that only in like classrooms, like sitting yeah. next to yeah, like, or colleagues do that to each other. Yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't. Yeah, no, Korea is very like. <laughs> I, I've heard that because the it's um, an in group out group thing that because your in group is so tight. Is it like yeah. Isa or Asa? What is that? Asa or something? Mm. Oh yeah, term? kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, mm. I, d- I didn't know the terms. Like, I thought it was right. Asa, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Insa means like um, very outgoing person, uh-huh. oh, like oh, social oh. butterfly. Yeah, yeah. And then Asa, and Asa like... means the outsider. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And because the South Korean relationships are so deep, like with your family, with your onnis, with your nunas, because those are so tight mm-hmm. that everybody else just becomes kind of nam, oh. or, or mm. they, they become non-existent yeah whereas our relationships in, in in other parts of the world we're sort of more there's more civil society yeah so mm-hmm. in korea it's us and them and the us becomes really strong and that's the true. them becomes even further yeah and the people might be off put by that but when you see a korean drama they come to understand it so they, that's why the i always say yeah, korean yeah. dramas are globally bonding because i know some people who've met friends from the u.s and they met somebody in south africa mm. and they bonded over one k drama mm. and that's what i see in my community so i get to see that and it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see mm. you know yeah, yeah. i get yeah. to see it on your channel as well when you post up stories and you can mm-hmm. see the interactions from different people how it's the k dramas or it's korea that brings these people together yeah and, and it, you act as a conduit i think for that and i, I hope so because i'll ask these questions all i have to do on my tour yeah. is ask the first question what brought you here mm-hmm. what brought you to korea what like how did you get introduced to k dramas it just to get people start getting into tears because they'll, they'll they're not gonna say i just watch for entertainment sake no they'll say things like i was on the verge of death or i was i lost somebody in my life you get these deep stories from these foreigners. Mm. I call them foreigners. I am foreigner too. But it's just, um, it's very heartwarming to see it has helped my mental health. That's the bottom line. Mm. Mm. Doing a tour is not easy. I mean, I was exhausted <laughs> half the time. And they they probably could tell, but they were so happy. But I was happy seeing how much love they had. It was not just a superficial, I'm just here to see Kong Yu. No, it was mm-hmm. actually like, they told me like Mr. Sunshine, mm-hmm. after they saw it, they were like, Okay, so the Japanese occupation seemed pretty bad because, you know, K-dramas will show that on the Korean side of things. So they actually told me they actually went further with research and even, like, researched on the Japanese colonization. Mm. And they researched the history of Korea during that time. Mm. That's the that's the depth of the community I'm working with. Mm. I'm like, what? They said, yeah. And I'm thinking of ta- about taking this local class. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and, but that's what gets the K-drama. So I don't know if Koreans know that. Because sometimes I'm like, do you guys know that these foreigners will do all this research on the history of comfort women, for instance? Mm. Tomorrow, the K-drama Tomorrow showed a whole episode mm. about a former comfort woman mm. who was struggling, you know, and then her family members trying to, like, help her. Mm-hmm. You see that in a K drama. People can't. I remember people demon going, "Is that legit?" And I, oh. I went, "They don't know that because some people don't know that history. Mm-hmm. They researched on it. And they went, oh my gosh, oh, wow. that is a true thing. That's terrible. It's neat to mm-hmm. see.' I went, they just went through the entire Korean history, and it's that's the depth of people I'm talking mm-hmm. about. That's what I mean by the depth. Mm-hmm. You know? I appreciate a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's so I, cool. I want I want people to know this, mm-hmm. and they don't know it. I wish now the Korea team who live here who are part of my tour, I remember them going, oh, it's kind of cool what you're doing, but we don't get it. I remember that. Mm. And I would get irritated at times as we were prepping. I'll be honest with you. I'm like, oh, they don't really know what they're doing. But then they saw my first two tours last year. And they went, we didn't know that there was so much love that they were, like, shocked. Mm. And so there's an appreciation. But then my tour guide went, this was, like, 
so beautiful to me because she goes, I can't believe how much they love Korea. Because mm. I go, you thought it was dramas. They love dramas, but that made them love Korea, South oh. Korea. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Because Korea has such a deep history, it has so many stories to tell, I mm-hmm. think, because it has yeah. some of the things that you've mentioned with the colonization, with the war, with the, with the yeah. separation between North and South, with yeah. the great upheaval of the, the nation from farming to the modern metropolis we have today. Mm-hmm. There's a wealth of stories to be told there, mm-hmm. and, and they do it so well. Yeah. Um, as we bring, because you've done a tour de force, we're, we're approaching three hours. Are we gotta, <laughs> we are. Gonna bring this uh, yes, uh, who's going to watch this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, K drama recommendations for modern people mm-hmm. who suffer from anxiety, who suffer from depression, who suffer from perhaps anything where they're not, they're not feeling pomichotta, they're not mm-hmm. feeling a hundred percent. Where do they go? What should they start with? So I have a very unconventional answer to that. Mm. I can recommend all the K-dramas I want, right? And I do have some, like, of my favorites. But it depends on the person. Mm. Because just like someone saying Korea is the most depressed country, I go, do you know depression in one person looks very different than another person? Someone might, pre- someone might present for depression looking, like, morose mm. and like this. Like, you know, Winnie the Pooh, Eeyore. Mm, yeah, that could be. But then I've seen the opposite of depression where they're angry all the time. And that's another symptom, too. They're angry, lack of sleep, frustrated. So I could recommend, for instance, I have recommended my mister to folks anxious. And they'll be like, what? I heard it was depressing. I go, depends on how you look at it. But it may relax you and you find it comforting because it's very slow paced, like steady paced. That might help you slow you down. But then I've ha- I know some clients that were like the complete opposite. I'm like, I think you need something like chipper, like, you know, startup or even like action. You know, I was like, um, eat to one class, action. So it really depends. Like, mm-hmm. I will never say one. Fla- I'll just give you my favorites mm-hmm. and what I enjoy. But I will actually have to know the person or some people will say something like this one didn't do it for me. What was a classic one? Um, I mean, even my mystery, people can't get past certain episode. I'm like, that's fine. Like, but then they'll think, but a therapist recommended. I go, but that's just, this is my best opinion and what I think makes for a great story. But at the end of the day, if you're telling me you like to kill her paradox, okay, that works for you. Now, but just know the limit of when something gets distressing or when you're not sleeping and you think that's relaxing, that may not be relaxing. Mm. So that's my answer to that because... Um, like people don't like this when they ask me this question in Q&As and workshops and stuff like that. I go, really depends. I'm sorry you don't like that answer, but every person's unique. And a K-drama I've recommended before, people are like, eh. And I'd be like, oh, okay, try this one. And I'd be like, hmm. They'll be like, I loved it. I'm like, really? Okay. (laughs) So really, like, yeah. And um, people should have a right to have their own opinions, Mm -hmm. right? So I always say, this is my opinion. Highly recommended. But I have won people over to my mystery. (laughs) I'm like, listen. (laughs) You gotta watch it, you know. Um, but again, if you can't get past, I know some people who could not get past like after eight episodes. They tried, and I said, "Fine, stop. Just watch something else." Yeah. Mm. So that's my best answer. Yeah. No, but I will say, classic ones that I tend to recommend are ones that really are like um, peaceful seaside stories. When the Camellia Blooms, Hometown Cha Cha Cha. Those kind of steady ones, I do recommend if you're already anxious and stressed, you know? Yeah. But then I know some people have told me, you know what? The glory was oddly satisfying for someone who's been traumatized. And mm-hmm. I went, okay. I Because they see something else and it helped them validate kind of what they've experienced. I'm like, all right, that, that works for you. Mm-hmm. So I'm very clear on, like, what works for you is good. Yeah. But again, I go, if you cannot sleep or something's distressing or it bothered you, then stop watching. Mm. I'm not here to tell you to binge a K-drama. In fact, that's the last thing I do. I go, don't binge. That's why I tend to say a dose of a K-drama a day is like an episode or a half an episode. Yeah. Excellent. Yunso, <laughs> any any final question, any comment? Have you been persuaded to watch K-dramas now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after a whole conversation, I should definitely watch my mister. Yeah, for, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but quickly about Dr. Slump. Dr. Slump, real quick, is doing um, a good job of yeah. making burnout or even depression, uljung, mm-hmm. like a main theme. And I would say in a normalized way. The only thing I didn't like, and I said this, was the therapist, or sorry, he's a psychiatrist, went straight to medication. Mm. For burnout, you don't necessarily need medication. Oh. Depression, you don't necessarily need medication. So I make that very clear because... That would be Korean society going toward the PhD of psychiatry 
We need more therapists in Korea, actually. You know, therapists are trained to listen. I'm not saying psychiatrists don't, but they're more medication-based. Mm. A therapist is trained to literally, and it's not easy to listen. There are times when I went, I'm missing something. But I really mean it when I see like 10 people and they may have depression that I diagnose with, but they're all different. Uh -huh. So sometimes Korea focuses so much on clinical case studies because they're so smart, book smart. I'm like, you need more experience in listening, which sometimes Korean with the Bali Bali culture, they don't do so well. So that, he was a great psychiatrist. I love the scene that um, Pak Shin has with him. But when he went immediately going, yeah, it sounds like burnout. And he explained it well. And I went, great, until he went, so this is the medication I, I was like, what? She didn't need medication. She didn't need medication. The, I'm not a big K-drama. I've not watched lots. But the, I think that was one of the first times that I've seen medication the way it was played out, that mm -hmm. I, I would imagine it's something like Prozac mm -hmm, that he mm -hmm. gives her, yeah. and then she's taking it, and then her brother and the mum find it, and there's that whole reveal thing yeah. that's going on, which I thought it was it was quite beautiful because there was a physical representation of the depression. Because if yeah. you tell somebody you're depressed, they're like, hey, get over it or something. That's why it's but so hard. But here yeah. we had... There was a physical thing, and well, it's like point. Koreans have hanyak or something. They're like, mm -hmm. take I mean, this it's when true. you're tired. And so, and so that's why I feel very, mm. uh, what's the word, conflicted, mm. because I think it's important to that they did do a good job of talking about it, but medication is not always the answer, and I think mm. that's where there's some of that stigma, because already, when you're being told, oh, you have, you're, you're depressed, um, here's some medication, there's a double stigma. Because mm. sometimes it's hard to hear that you you have depression to be diagnosed with it. So I don't tell my clients what I uh, diagnose them with unless they ask me. Then I'm honest, going, okay, well, just like you suspected, I diagnosed with anxiety, like things like that. But I would say 50% of the time you can get through depression um, with help, like professional help, with supportive help. Yes, you can. The other half is more clinical. Yeah, you need some help with medication and therapy. Mm. That's the best evidence-based um, therapeutic process when you have clinical depression to not only have medication, you also need talk therapy because you need to go through those coping skills. But um, but I, I don't not condone medication because there are times I'm like, I need you to go to a psychiatrist. Here's my referral. Mm -hmm. You need medication. Mm -hmm. But then come back and see me as we're on it. We'll, mo we'll modify it together. Yeah. But anyway, Dr. Slump did a good job. And there's other ones more out there that are making it part of the surrounding story and doing a better job of normalizing the conversation. So I'm good with where it's at. Just I just like to correct things when yeah. I see something like, hey, by the way, I didn't, they didn't need that. That's just my two Dr. Cents. Slump's incredible how cheesy it is. It's so cheesy. That, it's a typical K-drama. But then it goes into the, the mother and the depression oh. and all of that. It, it, it's very interesting how it navigates both of those worlds because you get the cherry blossoms and you get this <laughs> over... You do. Yeah. You, 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 Park like, Kyung Shik. You know Park Kyung Shik yeah. from yeah, the Uga Squad and all this stuff. He's a like classic. He's so typical and he does that well. But then you have them going through their own struggles. That's yeah, why it's called yeah. Dr. Slump. They're yeah. going through a slump. Yeah. You know what Korean dramas are able to do so well is you can get a, a couple of actors, a man and a woman, and they can play the 25, 30 year olds, but you can also do the playback scenes to when they're at high school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They look like <laughs> yeah. high school. They, they can wear the uniform. Exactly. They I, do to your eyes. Yeah, yeah Pak Shin is. Bit, I mean, they do, though. I still possible. think. No, I think they do. Uh, yeah. I'm like shocked that they could pass for high schoolers in mm -hmm. their uniforms and then they're really in, thir in their 30s, yeah. which they really are. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> Americans will say to me, really, really? I'm like, but don't they look like they're really 17? I mean, if they can pass it off, why not? You want the same actor. Mm. You don't want some teenage pretend actor, mm. you know? So they can pull it off. Some people don't pull it off as well. I'm trying to mm. think that you're like, get out of the uniform. But um, they they have to, they, have, they go back in their high school mm. thing and then they're, you know. Mm. But um, no, it's a, it's a good K-drama. And it's, uh, from what I can see, doing well in the ratings. I like to look at Korean ratings too. That's very important to me to see how well it's responding in Korea mm. versus the globally right and i see that it's doing well in korea i think the number one for some time was the killer paradox though mm. changnakgum yeah the, the murder killer paradox i was like of course it is you know but um then number three was i think dr slump mm. which is good yeah excellent all right <laughs> Thank does you, that Jeannie. end it that that, that ends three, it. Okay. okay oh my god <laughs> did i hit the world record I'm not sure. It's Look pretty close. I'm it's so competitive. Did, did I did I do the longest podcast? <laughs> I think the longest about three three hours fifteen. Oh. Depends what time we started. Mm. But that didn't feel like three hours whatsoever. Oh good, that, I'm that, glad. That yeah, she said it went by fast. I, yeah. I was shocked when I went to the bathroom. I was like, no wonder I had to hold my pee in. It was two hours. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow. That happens when you're fifty. <laughs> Very funny.
yeah. I can't do it because I drink a lot more water now. Thank you. That was fun. Yeah, no, you know, I think we're all fun. over the place.